Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandis Harrison podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm Weird Rider. Also joining us is David. Hey, I am Windrunner, and pleased to be going before Arjun in the order. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, I, you two, it's like, ah, who do I switch? I don't know. Uh, is Evgeny, what's up? Hi, I'm Argent, and I'm definitely the least in this company based on Height. order. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> this, this slight, this slight will, will only be slighted for so long before I slight someone on fire. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Already. I'm I'm happy to to announce that I have joined the the green screen crew. No, you're not supposed to bring attention to it. No, yeah, this is no, totally no, this natural. Is, no, this is this is a moment of pride for me. So I will I will nice. bring it up. Nice, nice, but nice. This is this is my own library. This, this so. is actually my background. There's it's, no green screen going on here. <laughs> actually, this is, I just have the back wall painted this way. You know. Yeah. No. Actually, Matt Purser and and some guy are hanging out in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like I just have them here. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Lost Metal is out. So there's going to be Lost Metal spoilers in this episode and and very much full Cosmere spoilers because, yeah, but uh, this episode is called Trell. And so Lost Metal spoilers, get get out of here, get out of here. Uh, no, no secret projects, though. No secret projects. See, that's true. That's true. When we're, we're not going to talk about that, but uh, not yet. Not yet. That, that'll be January. Um <laughs> Well, don't worry. There'll be plenty of things. We're oh, we're going to be very busy. Yeah, start yeah. of January. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, you you can go mm. look at my spreadsheet and look at the production schedule, oh, David. I we're going to record things on Saturday, and I'm going to get them out for Sunday because I am a masochist. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, it sounds like a, I'll be on winter like break. It'll be fine. Idea. It'll be fine. Okay, but. I, I see no problems coming from that. Not, I mean, I usually delay to the day before anyway, so it doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> just cutting to the chase. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Just planning it in. Uh, so this episode is called Trell. Uh, and so Lost Metal spoilers. Three, two, one. Get out of here. This episode is on autonomy. Trell's autonomy. Boom. Kind of. Ooh. It's a little complicated. Oh. And I want to say... We were right. Like, we were this right. was a common theory. Yeah, we, we were, were right. pretty right about this one. We were right. I know that it's been a common theory since Oathbringer. It's like, hey, the glowing red and red of Trell. Like, I mean, could be Yodium. And I'm like, that's true. But uh, autonomy makes more sense. And uh, there, there is possibility of Odium involvement uh, in, in things, perhaps, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. But we, we were right. We, we called it. And so that, that does feel pretty good. I got to be honest that we were, that we were right. It, it helped that there was a foreman on Taldane named Trell. That, that, that did help. That proved incredibly relevant. Super that relevant. Trell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. Yeah. So that's, that's a foreman that Brandon not only brought back in, in the graphic novel, because he was there in the prose. And so, like, clearly this name was important. <laughs> and also brought him back, gave him a panel, a full page of, of this guy going, <laughs> I, I oh, my name's Trell. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also like multiple wobs where Brandon was either being cagey about him or 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 being sly. I'm like, mm hmm, that's uh, that name. <laughs> no information about the foreman there, but we'll, we'll talk about trail origins here. Yeah. Uh, I still don't understand how <laughs> this all we, relates to each other. Right, we are going to figure it out today. That's that's right, what we're sure. doing today. It's definitely solvable. Also, uh, I just want to make a quick note that uh, naming these Lost Metal Shard casts is going to be really freaking difficult. I don't know what we're going to name the Ghost Bloods episodes. I don't know. I want to name something Kelsier, but I can't just have that be the podcast title. So I just we'll wanted just, to complain. But this we'll one was easy. We'll just call again. <laughs> no, you could, you could uh, say, we could where say is Kelsier? Lost Metal World Hoppers because yeah, that's but, in the blurb. Yeah, but see, but see, uh, yeah, Ghost Buds could be uh, Off Worlders or something or World Hoppers, yeah. right? But if we have a second episode that's solely on Kelsier, then it's like, what do we call that one? That's a difficult thing. The leader of Legacy the of the World. Survivor. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But this one was easy. We just called it Trell and we didn't put autonomy in the title. So there you go. <laughs> Let's start by talking about autonomy's intent because you know what's cool about this book 
we just have multiple conversations. It's like, let's tell you about autonomy. That's that's what harmony sounds like, actually. That's how it goes. And shy, actually. Uh, but we finally know what autonomy like is about. We 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 got some of this in Wobs, like a lot of this in Words of Brandon. But it's it's nice to have this all in a book where if you want to know about autonomy, then it's all here. Uh, and so we kind of know about autonomy's intent. And it's all about like exceptionalism and individualism, uh, except only do what Bobadin wants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's very much you need to strive to be better or to be best and to be your own unique version of yourself. But like within a, a specific path. Yeah, <laughs> that autonomy has has prescribed for for you, for your people, for your planet, whatever, whatever the case may be. Yeah, which I I think is the vessel kind of yeah. inserting. I think that's more coming from Bavadin than from autonomy itself. It's like it's her interpretation of autonomy. Oh, yeah. And and I think Shai even says that here, that it's like mm-hmm. it's filtered through a vessel who thinks uh, they know best. I think that's how mm-hmm. the line goes. Like, you, I could imagine a different vessel being more permissive in that regard, right? Like, that that would be very easy to imagine, which I, I yeah. think that's always been a subject of discussion in the fandom, where it's like, it seems like autonomy kind of has these very specific ideas, but autonomy is all about, like, freedom and stuff. And like, how did they balance yeah. that, you know? And I think mm-hmm. I think the, the, the big one that the fandom has been a little bit, maybe not necessarily confused, but has taken note of is the fact that a shard like autonomy implies individuality, autonomy, independence, things like that. And yet autonomy seems to like be meddling in, in right. a lot of stuff. And right. so people have been trying to reconcile that with, well, how, how, is this, how is this possible? And well, apparently standing apart is just not part of either the intent or the way Bavadin filters that intent. Because mm. uh, we are being told that uh, obviously, we knew about the the whole pantheons that are all yeah. autonomy, which is one of my favorite wobs ever. Yeah, we've I'm so glad it's in the book now. Yeah, um, but but we are also told that this is kind of the the strategy that Bavadin is applying to. Like, it, it's not a Cosmere war, but it's a little bit like Cosmere war. It's her strategy for control over everything, right? Just seed mm-hmm. avatars everywhere. And and gain control of the universe that way, and like co-opt other people's stuff, and then you're the only one in charge. Which is a very different strategy of Odium strategy of just let's kill all the other shards. And Shai even mentions that it's like, oh no, that's a different shard. That's, <laughs> that. that's not Trump. Oh, that's Odium. We'll see how the new Odium approaches that. Uh, well, I mean, that's. Mm. I think we need to talk a bit about that because it's that been, relationship. It's, it's been five years, and it's still weird. Oh, no, five years since Oathbringer. It's been two years since... Hey, there uh, it is. Uh, it's like five years. Five oh, years uh, since Rhythm of War. Like, where has the time gone? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> the thing I like about autonomy is this made a lot of sense to me with uh, Sand Mastery. Because in Sand Mastery, like, you really have to push yourself to gain, like, the next levels of like the next ribbons of power and things and mm-hmm. that feels right in line with this uh I've, I've been on this train for a long time of like a perseverance idea for this shard mm-hmm. uh which mm-hmm. like exceptionalism makes a lot of sense uh given that stuff right and it makes sense for first of the sun as well it's like the the, the pantheon islands are <laughs> very dangerous like you yep. have to be exceptional to survive there. oh yep. and yep. and you are very much proving yourself against mm-hmm. the island right against the father mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's a theme in the mastral's path as well yeah. it's just kind mm-hmm. of like that survival aspect yeah. and people die on the path and it is kind of what they're just like it is what it is anyway yeah, there's a line that said that uh, we, we have a ton of quotes here because we we did research. And by research, we control after trail and autonomy. Uh, very hard research. Uh, it, but it felt very much like Eric's beta experience. Hey, shut up. Uh, <laughs> I didn't do that. This, yeah. Well, no, I did, I guess. The natural uh, experience. There was a line that said living under autonomy wasn't bad as long as you didn't go to like the areas where autonomy like has you test yourself 
And yeah, so that's exactly the one I was looking for. And so like Mastral's Path and uh, like Patch G is like yep. exactly that sort yep. of thing. Like, I mean, you can get there. Good luck. Prove yourself. Have fun. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's even reflected in the portion of the letter that was in, was it Oathbringer, mm -hmm. where we have the perspective of Pachi, we believe, that's writing back to Hoyt and yep. kind of saying like, come come seek these challenges here if you yep. want to talk to me. Yeah, and it's yeah. like so, prove yourself letter. there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I actually had the letter uh, copied as an excerpt because I oh, thought fantastic. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you wish more, seek these waters in person and overcome the tests we've created. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. The, yeah sort of stuff. One other thing I like about autonomy is that even if you're fighting against autonomy, autonomy can be like, yeah, you're that that's actually very impressive and we we there's there's a respect aspect even if you yeah. aren't going directly in what Bavadin would want. I feel like that is kind of like a race versus odium thing where like the power wants a certain thing and so like the mm -hmm. power's like that person is really being exceptional uh, and Bobadin like begrudging is like, I, I mean, I have to agree, right? Yeah, no, I, I was thinking the same thing. Like they definitely seem to work off a similar, like they're sort of forced to respect this thing that is in line with what they want to do. Right. And so I think that like, it's sort of like it, it's rewarded if you're successful, you know, yep. like you can defy, yep. but only if it actually works. And if you don't, you're kind of, you're kind of going to be just torn down and forgotten essentially. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I will disagree a little bit. So with with most of this, I am I am on board with in that I do think there is the element of well, if you if you prove yourself, then then that's fine, and and the the shard will respect you for it. I don't know that at Bavadin is necessarily opposed to all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's there's as possible. much of a clash between the shard and the vessel in this, and I say that that's because. <clears throat> Uh, Telson was telling Wax at one point how much autonomy likes him. Yes, yes, yes. And how exceptional he is and, and how he exemplifies the ideals of autonomy, which, which I think is coming from Bavadin. I don't think that's coming from an avatar. Yeah, I mean, it, we see autonomy directly talk to Wax mm. even and say yeah. exactly that. So, and, yeah. and she likes him. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I would say I think that's coming from autonomy. I don't know. Bavadin is like another concept that's kind of floating out there that I think is different. I do think it's coming from the core personality that is like the main shard power. Mm. But I think it's Odium really hate like race as Odium, like really hated it. I don't think Bavadin slash autonomy like she like I think she's very open if, about it. Like, hey, like if you disagree, like prove yourself and I'll prove if you fail it, it'll suck for you. Whereas like race is like, don't do that. Even okay. though like the shard totally is. Agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like it's like she is open about like it being a possibility. It's a smaller conflict. It, yeah. And there, there's the line where Wax is like, what do I have to do to get you guys to shove off? And autonomy just says, prove that you're you deserve it. And yep. like, yeah, that really sums yep. up autonomy really well, I think like. Oh, you you want to determine your own destiny? Good luck with that, but we'll see. I I really like that as a as a villain or as an antagonist. Yeah, it's fun. I also like it as an aspect of divinity. It's oh yeah, like pushing people to be exceptional. Oh yeah, like, sure. I thought you were gonna go with. I, I was nodding because I thought you were gonna go with the aspect of divinity that is. It doesn't matter so much what the the deity thinks or how they feel about you if you pass these trials or whatever you are worthy for whatever reward yeah. uh is at the end and it's not about you know personal preferences and things like that. like mm -hmm. zeus can still hate you or whatever but you've you've beaten you know the the hydra or whatever right yeah 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 but like there's there's a lot of stuff in religion of like all right do these things and then you'll you're, you're worthy and like yeah. Like worthiness is definitely a thing in, in all these things. So yeah, I, I, I can kind of dig that, which probably before this book, I didn't really quite get how it was an aspect of divinity in a sense, right? Yeah, because like being autonomous, it's like, what does that mean? Like, yeah. 
Yeah. Whereas giving this breadth of understanding is like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have to follow autonomous to like self reliant to um, exceptional. Like that's the, the trail that you have to follow. Yeah. 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 And uh, autonomy thing, as we said, is uh, making these avatars. Uh, do we want to talk a bit about avatars for those who probably have not kept up with these very confusing words of Brandon <laughs> over a period of time? This book does sort of clear it up, kind of. So what is an avatar? <sighs> They're blue, I think. What? <laughs> no, no, they have they have they, those. They are in harmony with all the elements. Target. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, sorry. I was like somehow thinking of like a profile picture, but oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're they blue. are 150 they by 150 elements. pixels. Um, no, avatars. Cosmere avatars. How about that? Cosmere I'll, avatars. I'll be more specific. <laughs> are confusing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and even even after this book, I think they're still a little bit confusing. I don't I don't think yes. we have the full picture. Yes. Uh, let's go find someone who knows better than us. Brandon? Maybe let's go find a god to tell us. I've got that. Uh, so this is from Harmony's talk with Wax. Nice. Um, Though autonomy is held by a woman named Bovidin, her many faces, or avatars, act with independence. Trell, a male god from the ancient books, can be considered one of these. You rarely get to speak to autonomy herself, he continued. As I've come to find, she speaks through avatars, sometimes pieces of her, herself that she's allowed to gain a semblance of self-awareness, sometimes through chosen people she has given a portion of her power. So, so let's keep that in mind. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, before I go into a couple of chapters later where Shai has a conversation with... Uh, Mercy. It's the next there, chapter, actually. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, the, <laughs> that one's chapter nineteen, and literally Shy and Marasi is chapter twenty. Love it. Yeah. Uh, there was a there was a very good wob that we got a couple of years back mm -hmm. uh, that helps set a lot of the stuff up, uh, or at least put it in context. Yeah. And this is coming from one of the spoiler live, the second spoiler live stream, Ooh. in fact, uh, where somebody asked. Hey, Brandon, what is, can you, avatars, splinters, slivers, can we, can we get the skinny on all that? Yeah. And here is kind of the definition that we've been working off, off of um, in the past year, uh, where Brandon says, an avatar is a shard manifesting a semi-autonomous piece of themselves that is still connected to who they are. An avatar, for example, of autonomy, depending on how autonomy creates that avatar, and, and this is going back to uh, what Ian just read, where there are different ways of creating those. Might know, might not know, but they are still an aspect that they're still an aspect of autonomy. It's almost like God role playing, blah, blah, blah. The rest is not important. I would say pretty clear that Telson is the a person being imbued yep. with power, right? That's pretty yep. obvious. Uh, yeah. Seems like Patchy is maybe investiture letting to grow into its into something else, right? Yeah, that yeah. that seems rather than a person getting yeah. a specific amount of okay. investiture. Maybe is it the island? Like is it like is it the island? Yeah, is that a thing that we have like considered? Because maybe like, I I think it's the island. There's Patchy yeah. the being, but what does that mean? <laughs> Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I feel like if you've got like a really invested, like maybe aware in the cognitive realm because it's so invested, like island, like could you call it a being? I think I think you could maybe say that. I, I mean, know. is is stick a being? Right. I <laughs> I, I hope not. <laughs> what is a being in the Cosmere? <laughs> yeah, I believe we have a word of Brandon about how. The door being in the cognitive realm is investing the land, and that's yes. important. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was going to. And go I can't remember if like the wob like goes like further and says like the land is gaining sentience, or if that's just something I made up in my brain. I thought that was in the Chris? the cell essay. It is. It is in the cell essay. Yeah, yeah. This came okay. up recently, yeah. so I remember yeah. this. 
Uh, I was going to go to a different WAB where kind of uh, the first time or one of the first times we heard about Apache mm-hmm. and like its relationship to autonomy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And in there, it's a, it's a long conversation on Reddit. And Brandon <laughs> talked about um, autonomy, like investiture in the Cosmere and how it is keyed to specific shards. It's like different momentum, essentially. Um, or a different spin and how uh, autonomy was in in some ways always aware of this investiture, uh, like a lump of investiture on first of the sun, but in some ways only became aware at some point because while the shard is infinite, the vessel's mind is not. Right. And so like that framing made me think that Padgy was a, a large chunk of autonomous investiture that at some point Bavadin became aware of and was like, oh, this is mine. I can do something. I can uplift this investiture into mm-hmm. an avatar. And like maybe pump I some more that. investiture so that it was this semi-autonomous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever whatever that form of avatar creation entails. Yeah. yeah. And, and probably like... like- establish like some sort of connection because we know that they're like semi-autonomous so there is su- still some level of like they are the the core personality is influencing it once this has happened instead of it's just sitting there kind of passively yeah it's like you can't do anything with something you don't know is there but as soon as you do know it's there it's fair game but uh, going back to like her becoming like the shard being aware of it, but the vessel's not necessarily being. It reminds me of, uh, I think, still has a line of like where Kaladin asked her, like, "Did you know I could do this?" And it's like, as soon you as you had done it, I had always known you yeah. could do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like it's a similar sort of thing. Well, that's the Cosmere yeah. mumbo jumbo that we're here for. <laughs> the Stormfather loves that too. Good yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Um. And and with that, I want to to transition us back into into this book and the next chapter where yeah. Marcy is is speaking with Shai, uh-huh. and Shai is also info dumping on yeah. on autonomy. And I'm gonna skip a little bit because there are like two sentences here, two sentences there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Go read chapter uh, 19 and 20. You'll get uh, yeah. the info if you're, you're the gist of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like 80 percent there. Pretty much. Um, but Shai says the following. Conversations about autonomy can be confusing. Huh. End of episode. Really speaking, <laughs> really speaking to Shardcast in spe- specifically. If you've been confused about pre- our previous episodes. Yeah. <laughs> brief, brief, brief aside, I love like the recurring theme of like characters being confused about autonomy and avatars and trail and, I, and I, everything. I do like, kind of. I dig that. The most relatable thing in that book. <laughs> really. But then she goes on and says, Trellism is the remnant of an ancient religion of your world originally founded by autonomy long, long ago a seed from when she decides to move in. Um, and the ancient religion is obviously trilogism. Yeah. And then a bit later on, she says, uh, she, autonomy, wants to leave a god behind on this planet, someone who bears some of her power, who sees to her interests and is in many ways a piece of her soul. She does this all around the Cosmere. A bit later still, Autonomous investiture has a life of its own, and so each version of her becomes its own thing over time. Sometimes they aren't a person, but only power. Right. Speculate Padgy. It's one yeah. of those. Other times, if the situation needs more oversight, she picks someone to elevate. That's Which very is what, interesting. It's happening here, probably, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well... well um, she vaporized like is that's what is that what would, would happen if she had succeeded that's what Ooh, i want to oh, know telson vaporizing like when yeah. she finally becomes the avatar that is a good question because telson refers to herself as a sliver of autonomy or she that she does. will become a sliver of autonomy yeah she's, i uh, yeah. question her knowledge yeah maybe maybe yeah that that is possible but like normally slivers don't vaporize and like have the sort of ascension yeah. stuff, right? Well, they can, they kind of can, like Vin sort of did, maybe you, with the well of ascension itself. You mean not yeah, with the well, know. with the mists? She got real glowy. No, because I don't she know. came became yeah. a sliver with the well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but she didn't vaporize, is what I mean. Right. 
She got she got yeah. she turned all it's, white. Like she like filled with light. I guess maybe that isn't like quite vaporizing. Weird but. stuff happened with the well. Yeah. yeah. That it's I think it's, it was, it's like basically she vaporized in that moment. Yeah, it's I, or yeah. I, I think effectively it's not too different. Um it's just like her body was still around. Ish. Weird stuff happens i feel like because uh, autonomy's whole goal is get harmony out of here i'm leaving a god uh mm-hmm. for me uh and so i feel like the full avatar can act a lot like a shard on the specific world uh so they telson probably would vaporize that would be my bet because if if they're just like still a person when telson's fully invested uh, and becomes trell that's not really as godly. And so I feel like a shard could easily like beat that off. So I feel like for that to make any sense, that's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm leaving a god. They need to be like reasonably close to a shard. Probably like they can wield a lot less investiture than an act- a full shard can, but probably has a lot of similar traits. So I, I'm going to bet Telson would be vaporized and sort of ascend like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah, because I I feel like it depends on how much you like how helpless you think Harmony is. Like, if you think he really can do nothing, like maybe <laughs> a Lord Ruler esque like powerful figure can really just run stuff for you. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I I do think she probably would have vaporized. It, I I guess I'm thinking of like say a different conflict on a different world. She probably would say, okay, I'm fighting this enemy shard. Uh, I need a person directly like intervening uh so i'm not just gonna leave power to just grow and manifest itself whereas like patchy not a lot of danger you you can let that investiture sit a long time it'd be mm-hmm. fine whereas it, in these conflict zones you probably want a person directly yeah. overseeing this yeah. uh and mm-hmm. those other shards who aren't harmony probably can act a lot more directly so you you'd probably need something a bit more powerful than just a dude right even a powerful dude or girl yeah no it is interesting just because you like know for a fact essentially that autonomy is always going to be in a power deficit in like all of those conflicts yeah it is interesting right like how that how that works if they're if they just avoid confrontation generally and this is just Mm. one situation where she felt like she could move in because harmony is so weak or yeah the beauty of this methodology, I think, is that shards are infinite. Mm-hmm. We know this. Yeah. But they're limited by the vessel's capacity to understand. Mm-hmm. And, perceive. and so she's basically making more increasing. She's decreasing the amount of power like any like individual avatar has. But collectively, they are utilizing more of autonomy's investiture. So it's like really like that one avatar only has to last long enough for like some other avatars to show up and help. That'd be, OK, that's an interesting point. If they if they move around, things start to change. That's fair. Yeah. Or, Though, or not even help, but like make a winning move elsewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, open question whether th- things that are invested on a planet how much they can move right uh but True. but i really like that idea that like autonomy is increasing her like meant her let's say cognitive bandwidth and can mm-hmm. utilize that power better because it's like well instead of just one me i have 40 me's and mm-hmm. yeah if i'm in a direct conflict and i'm like fighting odium and if odium and mercy are fighting in Threnody or Odium, Mercy and Ambition. Sorry, I was like, Odium wasn't fighting just Mercy. Is it really the Ambition? And they're they're all fighting in like a direct conflict. Autonomy probably wouldn't do great there. But even uh, like Harmony's talking like when Wax is like, yo, when I'm going to confront Telson, you got to help out, bro. Uh, and Wax is like, will autonomy like do something? And Harmony's like, it's not our way. That would lead to bad things that we don't know. So these direct conflicts, I don't think happen very much because they're like really dangerous and destructive. 
So that's probably fine for autonomy for the most part, that shards seem to not want to really directly intervene and fight like that. The other thing is, it's hard to, all, like the other shards have very concentrated power. And so it's hard to, if you are trying to do something like Odium and like seek dominance over the Cosmere, you are, you are kind of only holding that one planet that you're on unless you're right. leaving a substantial amount of power behind you when you leave. Yeah. And so if autonomy just kind of slinks away in front of you and fills back in behind you, you're not building an empire. You're just kind of like holding one planet at a time. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, and the thing I was going to bring up, it reminds me of the kind of the final conflict or almost the final conflict between Vin and mm-hmm. Ruin. Right. Mm-hmm. In which they were doing very much like the direct shard conflict they were smashing their power against each other and yeah there was a little bit more in there because of the opposing nature of ronin preservation yeah. but that's essentially what they were doing right and what was happening a lot of the times was like vin was doing a thing uh, like she, she wanted to move the planet around she wanted to save people and things like that and ruin always had other moves that he was doing kind of around her right so vin would go and like save these people and in the meantime ruin would have enough control to like send these colossus into a murdering rage and and kill these other people so it's a little bit like that right yeah uh it, it, slight aside i had the thought the other day of how awesome would it be to have uh, space battles but your shard is also there and like so not like i want to see one of those shardic confrontations like Odium, Ambition, and Mercy on screen with like a space battle going on at the same time. And I'm like, dude, I'm ready for a, a, a Miss yeah. Fornair 4. That's going to be sweet. Yeah. It sounds like a great way to be like vaporized by like a stray scrap of power that or like turn into like a like a horrible Lovecraft monster. Just Probably. By, like, Pres- presumably your shard will be protecting you from that. Like both of them will be I just want to see that interplay on screen and not just like, oh, yeah, this oh, this yeah. cool thing happened a while ago. Like, I, I want oh, to yeah, see crap like that. Years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. I like that you brought up Mistborn Era 4. Uh-huh. Because that reminds me of a point I wanted to make on this episode. Okay. Which is that Trell has been talked about through since Alloy of Law. Like, it's always been a part of Era 2. Yep. I was a little surprised at how much autonomy was in this book. that's a good like, point yeah. autonomy herself spoke in this book yeah which is a huge like cross cosmere thing yeah and in retrospect i shouldn't be surprised because mistborn is one of the central pillars of the cosmere mm-hmm. so it's only natural that yes other shards are going to show up we may have thought that was going to happen in era four, but turns out era two is where that all starts. Yeah, like this book is really just autonomy trail stuff like <laughs> Southern mm-hmm. stuff. None of that autonomy trail stuff. That's what the, we're getting here, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I, one thing that I was going to say, because I feel like we already brought up most of the information we get on this in the yeah. book that I wanted to touch on was. Trellism versus trellagism and like just the religion side of things. I think it's very interesting that autonomy seeded this religion in the past. Yeah. That's, like intentionally, like we got, that is like probably the most interesting thing that we learn here. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Actually, David, oh. uh, like I wanted <laughs> well, to talk about to like, yeah. like <laughs> trail history because it's really weird. So yeah, white sand is like way back. Like we don't know yeah. the exact timeline, but white sand, the story is a long time ago. It's the earliest so far yeah. of published stuff. Yeah. It is, however, worth keeping in mind that it, it is way back relative to the final empire. Mm-hmm. We don't know where it stands relative to classical schedule. Yeah. And yeah, that and like might how be many... important here. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Because like we don't know how there were multiple cycles of the well. There were previous heroes that didn't use the well like Vin did. Somehow, I don't know, but there, there were at least a few thousand years of that, right? Yes. But mm-hmm. at some point, there's a dude on Taldane named Trell. <laughs> and concurrent with that, there is Trellagism, the religion that autonomy seeded here. So let's... <sighs> 
so so we we, we know that right yeah we, we have the quote that says uh that it was seeded yeah uh yeah. we have from the final empire Whoa. uh a bit about trellegism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we are told uh this is uh says telling us things mm -hmm. Uh, about people known as the Nelazan, uh, who lived far to the north, where the day and night cycle were weird. Um, so, like, Arctic Circle type sure. of thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe beauty in, they believed there was beauty in darkness, which may be relevant at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they had a doctrine that was purposefully vague, um, allowing all men to discover truth for themselves, which is now sounding a bit autonomous, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And that is all we know about trelegism from era one. And, and, um, and there was like uh, one there... big sun and like the thousands eyes of Trell. Yeah, it's like right? the thousand oh, eyes yeah. of Trell and his brother Nolt, who had like one big eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That glowed brightly because he was jealous. Yeah. Yeah. That really screams like Taldane, right? That uh, that that's yeah. like the, the mm -hmm. one big star, star for day side and then like, yeah. you know, dark side type things. Going back to um, avatars, uh -huh. is that mm. most shards have like one central mass, <laughs> like a giant star, uh. whereas autonomy has many masks. Oh, okay. Many points of light. Okay. All right. I don't mm. know if that's intentional, but I do like that. I, I don't know. I just no, thought I of it as we were having this conversation. And I'm like, yeah. I want to say that. I No, I think that is that is like, I could see autonomy putting in there and being like, that's cute. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting how the Nelazan worshipped the darkness and mm -hmm. found the beauty in there mm -hmm. when Trell the Foreman <laughs> was a daysider. Yeah. Yeah. Cause and it, so I don't I don't know if that's like just a world building quirk or if there's something more going on there. So like I honestly have no idea how Trell the Foreman relates to this <laughs> at all. <laughs> I have a new theory, but, but <laughs> I'm excited. David. I, I think part of what's going on with Trelegism is like autonomy seeded this religion and then over however long, like presumably thousands of years, I would think like teachings got a little morphed. Right. So sure. like worshiping at the dark might be not something that was originally part of the seeding, but just true. She was not actively preserving her own teachings on Scadrio. Like, they were left alone. Sure. Sure. And then she kind of had a course correct in error two. <laughs> like, nope, this is what I actually meant. Go this way. <laughs> so for, here's my theory for what's going on with Trell now. Okay. Because for a while, I was convinced that Trell would be the person that had been attached to the power that was going to be, that was the being that is Trell. Yeah. You know, like, whatever that chunk of autonomy is power. Mm -hmm. And then... Autonomy tried to make Telson that, if I am understanding this correctly. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so that's weird if there's already somebody whose power that is. Like, is he just going to get bumped? Or like, what? Is, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And so I think instead, Trell is potentially the agent that Autonomy sent to Scadriel to seed the religion. And so that is, so the name is just something from the religion that is the holdover, and that is his name. And so it's, that's what he did, but he himself was never a An part avatar. of that being. Yeah, I, I thought, before this book, I also thought the same, that maybe like Trail the Foreman was invested, right? But like, that's mm -hmm. clearly not the case. So like, I think that's the only thing that does make sense, David, right? <sighs> Unless like autonomy gave like a little bit of power, like th there seems to be like various thresholds of, the, of autonomy granting power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's right. there's a line, and and I I don't think we we put that in the document, but there's a line where somebody tells us about how autonomy has invested Telson. Yeah, and the implication I got from that line was that autonomy has given power to more than just Telson. And it is Telson's quest to kind of prove herself worthy, not only to, to autonomy, to Bavadin on her own, but also to kind of rise above all of the other people who were also invested and, and, and prove that she's better than them, even though she is the chosen avatar. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know how many people autonomy has personally invested like Telson currently. It's unclear. We see uh, like sort of autonomy red eyes and stuff for like people yeah, who are those spiteless are immortals. Oh, uh, we, we do need to talk we'll, about the we'll set spaceless we'll immortals. Yeah, 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 we do. Yeah. But uh, but I, I could imagine like autonomy investing Trell the Foreman a bit, like may, maybe even less than what Telson is in this book, maybe. Maybe even as much as Telson in this book. Having which this is not that much, right? Because yeah, she sure. gives Telson enough to like communicate with her followers and to like see grander design for things, like plan better. Sure. Mm-hmm. But she's not, yeah, she's not full avatar. I agree. She's yeah, got yeah, some yeah. stuff, but she's not there. My but. problem is like, I, White Sand is early. Yeah. I just, have a hard time wrapping my mind around the fact of it being so early that Trell, who shows up in White Sand, can get to Scadriel early enough to see this ancient religion. I mean, that because it's not re- like it's only a thousand years ago. It just showed up like two years be- before Roshek did its thing. Yeah, like, it no, it's be- been there for a long time. You- you'd probably need like centuries before like a Lendi time. Like m- m- if like like I- minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Like I could imagine yeah. like 500 years before a Lendi like that. That yeah. could work, but maybe not the cycles like Seiza doesn't know how long necessarily these religions existed like that information yeah. could get lost but I and I think that is a really good point that like getting mm-hmm. the timeline to work with that is certainly weird but I feel like Trell the Foreman has to matter in this somehow and I don't yeah I feel like that's the, this is the only way where ha- he can be relevant unless autonomy is like I like that name I, was, I think I yeah. shall take it Neat. So there is but like it's he, he, he'd be after it. I'm like, I don't understand like how he can be involved. I think it's interesting that autonomy seeded this religion like a long time ago, you know, mm-hmm. because there's from a certain perspective, like, what's the point of doing that? Because when she actually decided to use it, she changed everything about it and like brought it back <laughs> from the dead. And was, like, and it so was somehow in the words of founding. Yeah, which is also. I, I feel like they must mean trellegism when they say that. Yeah. And like, yeah. they're like, this is our interpretation of that because I don't feel like Seize put in, unless it was like a weird sect that Seize was like, oh yeah, there is that, you know, the stupid version of trellegism. <laughs> and uh, and these, these guys, they believe Metalborn are awesome and amazing. It's like, yeah, yeah that's not in there. Yeah. Even though nobody knew about Alamancers back in the pre-ascension <laughs> times, they still love Metalborn and the, the Brugman, wish, the no wish.com version of Metalborn. So yeah. that couldn't have existed at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I wonder if it's because she needs to like get kind of like her pa- like a hook of her power into the planet in some way, you know, so she can eventually do this and start. Like, I don't even necessarily know if on a planet that's created by rune and preservation. Is there a natural patch of autonomy to be found there? Is there wood elsewhere? Point. Maybe. I don't really know how that really works, mm. but that's a good I, point. No, I, I have an opinion on this. And I don't think it's about actual power, like in, in investiture in that sense. I think it's about influence. I don't think that autonomy is seeding all of these avatars throughout the Cosmere so that they can be so that they can execute her will in a in a shardic kind of way like the avatars are not smiting people or whatever i think they are seated in all of these places to gather followers and influence and things like because think about an alternative timeline to era two where harmony somehow had not established himself as the god of this world post ascension and was just kind of hanging out or whatever and in these 300 years Trellism becomes the dominant religion on the planet. And let's say by the time Harmony decides that, oh, I want to actually be God to these people. They are already following someone else and doing other things. And, and yeah, Harmony can do things like because mm-hmm. he has so much more power. But and, and Brandon keeps coming back to this in various books. War on a Cosmere level is in some ways about the hearts of men. Yeah, right. 
And so if you have an entire planet that is already in their minds following autonomy, it becomes more difficult for you to establish yourself as, hey, no, this is actually my planet. Yeah. And even okay. more difficult if that planet never had a shard to begin with, if it's like first of mm -hmm. the sun or whatever. I think that's yeah. very interesting. Th th that is interesting. That does get into a somewhat common trope in fantasy of like gods gaining power oh. from from sure. their believers. Sure, right. Which is not usually something we think of in a Cosmere sense because sure. the shards quite literally are power regardless of what people think of them. The, the hearts of men line is interesting. I don't know if the scenario you laid out would quite work for Gadriel because they were specifically created by ruin and preservation. Like, he, so Harmony like has a m more fundamental connection to them. But True. I think autonomy is seeding things throughout the Cosmere, largely for like rainy days. It's like I may need this up for some day. Some day. Who knows what I'll need it for, but I'm just going to like put something there. We'll see what happens to it. And it reminds me of I have not read Dune, but from what I understand, there's an organization there that goes around seeding re religions in case somebody shows up there and they can use it for effect. If you've read Dune, put it in the comments. Am I understanding things correctly? That's where my brain went. I, I have a thought about the seeding worlds uh, along this mm -hmm. line. I, I don't think it's purely about influence, though. I, I think mm -hmm. there is a mechanical reason she's doing this, because I think if there's no. Well, I guess you, you kind of need the influence, but I feel like mm -hmm. as soon as autonomy is like, yo, skate a threat, there's harmony now. Mm -hmm. I feel like autonomy needs some capital C connection to that planet to start mm -hmm. like doing more stuff. Because there, there was clearly a point where in era, in era two, we're at the point where people are like referring to Trell like a lot more and even maybe mm -hmm. talking to Trell, which presumably is just someone who's more invested by autonomy or something. I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would not be possible unless there was unless there was a hook in a capital C connection that autonomy mm -hmm. can like dump stuff through maybe like that's, yeah. that's my thought so i'm going to just interrupt here for a very seamless transition for a word from our sponsor uh <laughs> <laughs> you all here are smart and awesome and well-read people and that means you probably take your internet security seriously. You don't want your personal data stolen. And you probably don't want emotional alamancers and influencing your thoughts in your computer. That's why we're proud to present Copper Cloud VPN. Uh, a brand new VPN that takes your data very seriously. You don't want autonomy or your ISP spying on your calls with Harmony. Uh, you don't and, and, you know, putting on your aluminum foil hat all the time, that's really tedious. So go to CopperCloud VPN, where they'll keep your data secure. And you can go to coppercloud.com uh, slash 17S <laughs> for a full year free trial below. Uh, and, yeah, I don't think burning copper would prevent talking to a shard with hemolurgy, but, you know, hey. So... It's a conversation that we Maybe. could have at some point, probably. Yeah, that's actually a good point, because it doesn't really... Question. Copper doesn't really come up in Era 2, honestly. <laughs> like, burning copper. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or, like, Seeking, either, really. And in this book, briefly... Uh, oh, yeah, with Seeking Pergamy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. was wild. Yeah, was, yeah I mean... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I don't think it was treated as being as wild as it should have been treated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Wax, Wax did go, oh, that's that's supposed like only the most skilled of mm -hmm. seekers should be able to do that. And like, but, it's honestly just weird that like it isn't easier to do, you know, I don't know. Maybe I I feel like it's like Wax himself is already kind of like a freak alamancer, you know, like not really, but like freak is the wrong term, but he is like kind of like an insane he's a steel savant with like ability people consider to be impossible so he's just like oh there's another guy who's also 
really got yeah. it going on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much he is, right. yeah he is he is a poor pov for us to be in yeah, yeah someone yeah. else would be like oh my god what but wax is just like okay yeah like i am also awesome it's tuesday you know all right yeah. th- this just happens so let's go back to troll yeah we gotta go, go back, back to troll we gotta go back to so i i have been sitting on on one quote that's not okay. super super important but i think it's relevant okay. and i want to submit that for evidence okay uh and that is coming from um that scene when wax is uh, chasing the trucks and he finds the dying uh oh, person autonomy. yeah yeah and autonomy like possesses yeah or something this yeah. this dying woman yeah 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 uh and and she admires wax because of his drive and individualism uh and wax is like what are you and he's like you know what i am trell we're getting voice acting <laughs> And 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 was that uh, Michael Whalen? <laughs> Michael Kramer? Damn it. <laughs> Michael, Michael Whalen. Yes, it was actually Michael Whalen. <laughs> um, and and she says, um, your sister becomes Trell. And the thing whispered. The name and mythology I prepared for her to adopt. But she has not achieved it yet. And I am not Trell. Rare is that I speak to one directly as I do to you. And the scene is so Wax good. Identifies her as autonomy. Yeah. So she's not. Cool. She's not Trell. Not Trell. Right. Not Trell. Uh, Telson becomes Trell. I don't think we have that in the outline, but I feel like there were moments earlier on when it was like confirmed that people were speaking to someone or something presenting as Trell. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is there any so time I, I that feel we can like say that it is Trell that's talking? I yeah. feel like there is a Trell avatar so out there. Here's what I think is going on. Most of these avatars, they're they're masks for autonomy. Like, yeah, right. she's presenting like differently for different people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I would say that most of them are individual beings, whether they are investiture that has gained sapience or whether they are a person who has been elevated. Mm hmm. Let me further refine. They all, or at least most of them, start as masks for her. And so, like, I think up until now, like, when I someone see. talks to Trell, it's like, autonomy is puppeting it. Like, she's, like, in the persona of Trell. And she's preparing for... Uh, Telson is currently the understudy, and she's going to take over that persona. Mm, I see. But when she's talking to Wax here, it's like she drops, like she's not going through, like, I am Trell. Like, no, it's just, it's straight up. She breaks character and talks directly to him. Because he's just so mm. exceptional. Yeah. He is like, great. <laughs> whereas other people, it's like she is playing up the, the character of Trell. Yeah. But it's that still seems like technically it. autonomy talking. Yeah. And okay. then, like, so, like, this is like she makes characters. And then either like invest power into them or like pick someone is like, OK, you take over this character. I'd say maybe to that. I think it's possible that Trell is has more firmly like started to butt off into something that is capable of interacting on its own. That is like currently combining with Telson. So, oh, OK, I don't, sure, I don't know. Sure. If, yeah, I don't know if sure. maybe autonomy started play acting, but I do think she's like in the process of making this an avatar. So I don't think that necessarily what that that i think that these two are becoming more distinct all the time potentially so i don't think we can say that mm. it's always trell or it's always autonomy just pretending to be trell even at this stage it appears to me and this book seems to imply that the weird people with glowy eyes and the sets faceless immortals that we got at the end of bands are just autonomy they're just, yep. it's just autonomy yep. and that's it yep. that's, they're just random random people that have been Spikes, they've, they've had guess. a trillium spike shoved into yeah. them and that yeah. opens up autonomy to possess them i guess mm-hmm. that, yep. this, yeah but which, which, which honestly is very disappointing to me uh, i know we talked yep. about it but like that was not what i got out of the ends of bands but i couldn't imagine that like if you have one of these spooky dudes talking to you it's like yeah i mean trail i guess i'll get on in and Watch that because those guys were freaky. Uh, so mm. I went back and and reread the 
the epilogue of bands in preparation for this. Yeah. Um, because I know that we've had conversations in private where we were yeah. either confused or frustrated by what felt like a promise for mm-hmm. Evil Chandra and, yes. and ended up being not that. Yes. And while I am not completely satisfied by this explanation, I think there is more to the end, to the epilogue of bands that seeds autonomy um, in the way that we see her in, in this book than we originally thought. And so I want to I want to read some things to you. Uh, all from the epilogue where Marcy is reading some reports and she's reading about tales of men with red eyes who visited in the night. This is nothing interesting. And then later on, we jump to suits um, POV where he dies and he's in the cell in the prison cell and a stranger stalked in male this time with a ragged beard and wild hair. A beggar stolen off the street suit guest. Which supports the idea that someone like grabbed a random person and shoved a spike into them. Sure, sure, yeah, Mm -hmm. sure. Uh, Male this time suggests that he thinks of these people as messengers, right? Or (laughs) avatars? Let's not use that word here. I I don't know about that. It just seems like he... Like he expects that the servant can show up and it could be either gender. And he just okay. has to be like, oh, this yeah, time. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is, that's this is my important. That. I'm that's happy to fair. concede that. Yeah. And then we move on. You could tell uh, by the way they walked, never a stroll, never leisurely, always fast, determined, purposeful. Uh, of course, the softly glowing red eyes were another sign. And this is something we see a lot in this book. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Wax doesn't know about the stuff. The set had faceless immortals of its own. This has to be suit just misreading the situation right Mm -hmm. and and that seems very purposeful on autonomy's part that like do you really want to explain what these things are and that like are are like is this trail itself is this some other thing like you probably want to keep it vague and weird Mm -hmm. right maybe It, it just doesn't like okay here's my problem with it is that a it's not more interesting it's less interesting to me. It is less you know, interesting. It's a, it's it's a it's a we're we're promised a thing, and the twist is that it's not that thing. It's something less interesting, which isn't. Fun. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's fine. Like it doesn't like it like it's totally plausible. It's wanted us to understand what's going on here. You know, like he yeah. clearly that makes sense. But that autonomy is like okay. So like my job is that I'm gonna like do my own dirty work and like walk around as a chandra to go blow up a dwarn. I could just send any one of my like servants to do that. Like why am mm. I it didn't like it just like it that's doesn't fair. make sense as something that a shard is doing. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that unless like she more. wanted like she wanted to talk to Edwarn in that moment. I guess. Which is possible. <laughs> Um, and like she didn't want to waste somebody. And, and this is this is the bit that I found interesting. OK, mm-hmm. uh, so the conversation continues. Edward is, is making snide remarks about, oh, I've been in the cell for two weeks. Our timeline is not yours, says the beggar person. And I think for a long time, most of us, if not all of us, have been reading this hour as a plural Hey, we, the sets faceless immortals, our timeline is not yours. Ah, yes. But the last metal establishes, not consistently, but a lot of the times, autonomy speaks in, uh, well, in, in second person. Yeah, in we. Mm-hmm. But, that, uh, but not all the time, though. Not, not all the time, in but fact, it, it happens. It happens, definitely. Looking at these quotes, because I feel like this is slightly inconsistent. See, okay. I, it, no, I agree I guess, that it's slightly inconsistent, but it's there. Mm, it's I, when autonomy wants to be dramatic. Yeah, I guess. I, but I mean, it, the, really, the we is that we get is in the Oathbringer letter, where it's like, we're talking about we as the well, set. Well, there's of, also like, that, yeah. Right. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. Sorry, yeah. the set of avatars, not the set of the organization. Sorry, just to be clear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause Brandon for me, co-opting all the words. Yeah. He does do that. For like for me reading this, it was always just we autonomy's interests do not move according to your timeline. So I never like yeah. read that as yeah, we sure. faceless morals or we anything, just like we the people that are not humans that are interfacing with you. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But in the light of the lost metal, I think this is clear, like this is Bavadin using royal we, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And then Suit says, not complaining. The immortal responds with, are you? It is our understanding that you push for acceleration, blah, 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 blah. Skipping a little bit. Our accelerated pace, our accelerated pace will no longer require the set to have its full hierarchy, but you need us to rule, to manage civilization on, on this planet or whatever. And, and Babylon says, no longer. Recent advances made civilization here too dangerous, allowing it to continue risks further advances we cannot control. And so we have decided to remove life on this sphere instead, which is, again, this is Bavadin making that decision, we, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Thank you for your service. Serve in another realm. We're not going to touch that in here. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is prompting Bavadin to like send the, the men of red and gold and just exterminate everything. The men of gold and red. <laughs> yeah, can Gradual. we can we can we take a quick <sighs> note to say we've been Mandela effect for like the history of the podcast or 2011 mm -hmm. that's like oh men of red and gold. No, and it's I, gold and red and you can go back to alloy and it's gold and red. And I yeah. tried. I thought <laughs> I was saying the correct <laughs> thing like I was aware of this and I yeah. double yeah, it, this is a myself. thing in our outline. Yeah, oh yeah. Which yeah. like I do want to talk a little on like why i think this happens is huh. because like linguistically in english words go in a certain order yeah. uh, like adjectives in particular is like opinion size age shape color origin material purpose noun oh send me that link by the way i keep losing it uh, well here's a copy of yeah i'll send it to you later <laughs> but um our brains are naturally trained to put color red in front of material gold. Oh, those are both colors, though, in my mind. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. think that's yes, but there's also like a heraldry thing where, like, the metallic color sure, goes I second. So it's yeah. just like our brains are trained to think of like primary color and then like metallic color set. Here, here's my theory. Harry Potter, Gryffindor is red and gold, they always say. People, like, people just locked into no, that but, but as so, being the way that you say those two colors together. I, I hear you, but also yeah. just, just now in my head, I was like, do I, do I prefer blue and silver or silver and blue? And I prefer silver and blue. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I have no opinion. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, but like... Put your comments below if you've been annoyed that we used men of red and gold on the show, because <laughs> honestly, like reading this book, I'm like, that's an error, right? It's like, it's not an error. It's like, I've just been, we've just been wrong the whole time. What? And it seems like it happened immediately. I don't think there was a, a period where we had it right and then we flipped it. Like, it's just every yeah, time I, I look know. back at old posts, I think forever. Uh, I, I, I gotta admit, I am kind of annoyed in this bands thing. We'll talk about the men of gold and red. Gotta intentionally think about the order there. <laughs> but we will talk about them because they're very cool. But like this band's epilogue, it's so weird that uh, if this is autonomy and using royal we, that like in the scene where autonomy is talking with wax, it's not the royal we. I don't, I don't know. It's weird. And I... I think it's weird, and I'm disappointed that there's not these sets faceless immortals, and it's just autonomy. I don't like it. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to my, like, autonomy is breaking character for that, and she's just talking to him straight. Sure, Whereas, that's like, fair. That's like, fair. With, like, with Edwarn, she's fancying it up. Sure, right, 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 right. She is the shard, not the vessel. Yeah. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. But, I don't, but, don't want to. I feel like that seems like going in a whole weird direction with but, what is Bavadin. But I can agree dark. that uh, Bavadin is playing it up when talking to the set because there's this whole mythology mm -hmm. she's creating for them in a sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Like that's plausible to me. Whereas like Wax is like, well, I mean, I know Wax, you're going to try and like you're going to be dead soon or I'm going to lose. Like we, we, we know how I, this is going to go. So mm -hmm. let's have a chat. Well, well, she's going to kill. Edwarn's also going to be dead soon. She's here to murder him. Uh, I like, guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess I guess like, she doesn't make, like it. <laughs> I guess you could make the argument that she is she's presenting as Trell in that point. Mm -hmm. That was what I was thinking. Sure, and, sure. and Trell's persona is someone who speaks in the royal we. Or or it is it is Trell. 
again yeah. an option. Well, I guess yeah. maybe part of the mythology is that each of these red-eyed dudes are one of the stars of Trell, right? Like, and oh, so there's there's a lot of them, right? Yeah. And that's why she's using we. I wish we got a little more actual mythology of Trellism because we don't get any of that here, right? Uh, you know, you know what's weird? No, many I'm things, quiet. but specifically. Uh, in in chapter six, when Marcy is mm -hmm. uh, killing the cycle mm -hmm. in the in the set hideout, yeah, his eyes also glow mm -hmm. red. Like she 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 shoots him, he looks dead, and and she's like pocketing him, and and he comes back to life, and his eyes start to glow faintly, and the way he speaks is not as autonomy or an avatar like he he seems to speak as himself he says trell is choosing hosts avatars bestowed with his power how would you marcy like to be the accomplishment that proves i am worthy of immortality low woman and and then she kills him but then like uh, his eyes glow <laughs> more and so then your end your end comes either in ash or in the hands of the men of gold and red uh yeah. maybe like that's more autonomy like the more eye glowy red and like the less glowy red does sound more like him and he's like oh this is a competition of who becomes trell because that's how this goes and yeah if i kill you like maybe autonomy will like that and maybe i'll be trell mm -hmm. maybe he can feel autonomy like coming toward like you know like filling up with power and he's like oh if i catch you right now it could be me you know yeah 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 trail is choosing hosts yeah yeah i don't know i don't know how it, <laughs> it doesn't seem to fit together that well to me like it doesn't it's one confusing of, is this one of telson's competitors like for yeah, right? he seems I, so I, low I, level it doesn't make sense you know is anybody theoretically able to rise to the top if they have a trail spike well it's probably like advertised as like any of you could could be this person I get that it. which in reality like really Telson is the one being groomed for that I guess but she's it's, like it's the, going into like exceptionalism any of you could be yeah that person. all of you can become You're rich not, billionaires right be. yeah like it, she's oh the, yeah it's, it's like she she's the chosen heir but if the others convince Mm. Trell like, otherwise or get rid of Trell uh sorry get rid of uh Telson yeah which maybe I didn't misspeak who knows <laughs> um, <laughs> so here's the thing that's confusing to me so there's a seeding that happens thousands of years ago okay. classical skage real time who knows how long mm -hmm. ago maybe Trell the foreman is involved but <laughs> Let's assume he does, for example. I don't know. That's just a seed for a long time. Harmony ascends. The conflict and, of... And it's, just a, it's just a cultural thing, right? It's just lore. Yeah, and maybe like light capital C connections back to autonomy that autonomy can use later or something. Era 2, very different things. Uh, presumably, mm -hmm. autonomy has been working to expand trails influence in the past 300 years right in like creating this organization the set but at some point autonomy has dumped enough power to like get spikes of a weird metal right like that's that's not nothing yeah. right like that has to happen because otherwise she can't talk to these people without the spikes right uh directly uh and so i i'm there's definitely a blankness of like what specifically did autonomy do there, right? That's a little weird because and it has and it has to do with like shards investing themselves on yeah, the planet, right? To right. the point where they can interact with the magic. But mm -hmm. then there's also the line in. I'm glad you brought up the investing, right? Because there's this whole like autonomy literally invested Skadriel, right? And that caused like mm -hmm. Harmony's blindness, which is also super weird uh so like how much did trell invest there or autonomy i meant autonomy the timeline's really weird about this i think and and we see that leave at the end right yeah when, it left. yeah, it left. yeah at yeah. least that at least that portion i assume that there still has to be something in the planet sure 
Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Trell is going to continue to be relevant. We know that from Wobs that yeah. Trell, there's era three Trell stuff. And I mean, they even so, say at the end, like Trell will be back. You know, so, yeah. so I, th- I think. I think there's two things going on with like the the investment and the the mm-hmm. blindness and the shroud and things like mm-hmm. that because we see at the end of and the at the at the end of bands mm-hmm. we see you know the the red kind of miasma over the planet yeah and harmony says this is a representation of something right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and in in his chat with wax in this book yeah. early on he says that about a year ago uh he attacked this thing but it was a it was a shroud or a misdirection or what it was a trap and that caused or maybe not hold up let me let's get i thought the, it was that autonomy it, attacked him but. yeah uh, uh well a year ago autonomy came to him because oh yes you're correct she thought that's when he he would be the most desperate with the blindness setting in sure order. okay yeah 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 uh, okay these details definitely matter we are in chapter 19 as expected uh-huh. and harmony tells us that uh, well wax asks about the redness that he saw in the vision mm-hmm. and harmony says um it invested the planet invested me which can of worms <laughs> yeah. that is that is a can of worms like um, investing a shard with more shard stuff i mean i don't see any reason why you couldn't do that i guess oh it full i i, I it's not investing the shard it's investing the vessel i think yeah so say that in particular right yeah oh yeah. well, maybe I don't know. that's what's causing the problem i think you guys are doing a lot right. of vessel stuff i don't know about today uh, i think that's interesting <laughs> let's table it yeah let's mm-hmm. table that because that's the weird yeah. crap we'll have a harmony <laughs> podcast because we got to talk about harmony and discord you discord. hell yeah we're going to talk about that uh what you saw was a shroud Wixilium. i responded too slowly it's a failing of mine uh, by the time I, really, I realized what was happening, the shroud had come over me. It doesn't hurt, merely dumps my ability to see. You mean, I don't know what's happening. What's Shell doing? Uh, I don't know things. Uh, they put oh. that haze up as a kind of smoke screen. When I attacked, the haze okay. infected yeah, yeah, my yeah. ability to see the future temporarily. I'll be rid of it in a few years. That's nothing to gods. Right, okay. Trell is the god autonomy. And by the way, we have Marsh later on also saying that Trail and Autonomy are the same thing. Yeah. What we call Shards of Adonisium, blah, 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 blah. Where yeah. is the one year ago? Yeah, because, it, well, it, it, is, it is one year ago, right? Because uh, Harmony tried to reach out to Wax uh, and Wax just didn't respond. <laughs> Great call there, Wax. Great call. I uh, agree with his decision. He's done. Fair. He said it twice. That's just true. That's true. Respect that's him. True. Yeah. Yep. But uh, it, it was a year ago. So, yeah, that was when Harmony attacked uh, the, the haze. Smo- the smoke screen. The smoke screen. It, well, nice. yeah, that, it's kind of, like, you think about it, it's kind of like autonomy, like, threw sand in Harmony's eyes. And he's, like, three years on the scale of chart. He's going, like, oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, presumably, before this, this, like, red haze has been slowly growing over a long period of time and like harmony just didn't really notice or act sooner maybe and i would guess that's just like autonomous investiture right Sure. right yeah autonomy is like sending a little bit over time yeah that seems possible yeah it's like i think it's less that he didn't notice and more that like he didn't know what it was so it was like Mm. okay i need to assess Mm. and then it's like it's difficult for him to act so by the time he wanted to act like he had to like build up to it and by then it was just too late yeah 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 sure sure yeah i'd be very interested to know when harmony's letters to hoyd happen in relation to this specifically yeah (sighs) just because it seems i I believe autonomy is not one of the shards that says it lists as having spoken to in that. Yeah, I, I believe that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And in this book, he says that he's had a difficult time reaching autonomy directly. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so oh, I wonder if they, yeah, I wonder if that is pri- like, you know, kind of prior to this a little bit, which would potentially make sense with timeline stuff. Yeah. Cause he era does two is say between five and six, right? Stormlight. Five era two is between five and six, yeah. but also in the letter, he says that he needs someone who can act a when sword. he can't yeah. someone like a sword which suggests that the letter predates Wax. Wuxillium's election 
Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Apple. True. That makes true, sense. True. That's true. Yeah. That's a good way of dating it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah, so it that... mentions like he's preparing someone. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So, like so this it's... might be like during while well, he's still out in the roughs. <laughs> yeah. That that still puts us like at yeah. least pre lost metal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For yeah. The list. yeah. Yeah. And and when you think about it in bands, he said he directly said he didn't know what the power was yet. So mm-hmm. he only relatively right. recently discovered that it was autonomy. Right. Yeah. That's that's very true. Very true. Yeah. You see, Harmony had no idea at the end of bands, which is <laughs> mysteries for waiting for this next book. Basically, uh, we did get a good answer with the the haze, though. So he did set that in up in bands later. It's just the sets faceless immortals. I'm like, ah. I don't know if I would have done it that way, Brandon, if this was what yeah. you were going for. But hey, uh. I, th- I think a little bit of this book suffers from, you know, having been written. Yes. Half a decade after yeah. the previous one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, autonomy was been pumping in investiture since, let's say, Harmony's Ascension. Right. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so- and Yeah. Just to clarify, so we do feel like autonomy probably has to be sending investiture, and there's not some investiture that existed on schedule that they could awaken and, and increase. Um, the I could go either way. Okay. It's like I, because of the unique circumstances of schedule's creation, I don't think there would be any autonomy directly on schedule. There might be some in the system. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. she's like sure. nudging that way or just like pushing it directly there yeah. from herself. Mm-hmm. She'd still need a lot of it. And like that, that haze is a mm-hmm. lot of stuff. So even if there was some, I feel like she'd need to dump more. You know, that's kind of my thought. Like you, you need to concentrate a lot of it to get spikes of a god metal, surely, right? You know? In more than a shard pool's worth. We know she managed to scrounge that much up. Uh, we'll we'll get there. Oh, we will. Yeah. We will absolutely <laughs> get there. Holy crap. Oh, what is going on with that? Do, do we have anything else on Trell timeline? Because there's a big, there's big gap. There's big gaps here. You know? I, I think I've kind of reached the limit of my Trell ideas. I do. So I will say kind of as a, as a way of concluding my involvement with the subject. I do like the idea that Trell the Avatar was never a thing. Yes. I like the idea that Trell the Foreman, I, I don't know what's up with him, and hopefully we find out one day. But then at some point, yeah. Autonomy decides to put on her Trell mask, show up on, or I should say Bavadin decides to put on her Trell mask. Mm-hmm. Uh, show up on schedule and establish a religion. Uh, I don't know if it's like autonomy showing up there. I don't know if like Trell the Foreman established a Trell centric religion and then people emigrated from Taldane to schedule. But like in some way, a Trell centric religion found itself there without the existence of a Trell avatar. Mm-hmm. And now, Millennia later, autonomy is investing Telson a little bit and is saying, hey, I'm going to give you a little bit of power. If you prove yourself worthy of this power, I will give you more and you will become this figure of legend that I have seeded into this world and you will become Trell and and a full avatar with whatever that entails. I like that setup. Yes, that definitely seems to be the case. And so I agree. A true Trell avatar never existed. I will take an alternative route. OK, on that. I would say that I don't think this is necessarily the case, but this is this is my alternative to that is this is not just like an all at once thing. I don't think autonomy can just like go from sock, like essentially being like a sock puppet and just pretending to be Trell to creating an avatar of Trell in an instant or over the course of several hours or days even with Telson. I don't think that's possible. The way that they talk about the Avatar and a Brodi sort of like slowly coalescing and turning into something, sure. maybe that's just if you're reawakening power and that's a longer process. I personally think that there's more you have to do to make an Avatar than just empower an individual and say, you're good to go. And so mm-hmm. I think that there, especially with all this investment that's going on, there's a God medal 
that probably is the god metal of Trell. I think there's a possibility that autonomy's god metals have different powers depending on what planet they're on even. Harmony Harmony does think or does say at the end that oh we should probably call this Bavadinium. Though That's like Harmony, an idle comment. I would it, not put a lot of stock in that. Okay. Especially because Harmony uh can be ignorant of things. Going off of that, something I don't think I made clear earlier when I was talking about like the mask that is Trell. Like, I think that is autonomy, like building the uh, avatar. So I like she is like, it's not just like she's pr- she's not just play acting. She is doing something mechanically. She's just puppeting. Interesting. What is Trell? See, that's not what I understood Archie to be saying. I that's because that's not what I was saying. <laughs> that's what I was saying. Yeah, okay. that's what, that's Let's more, yes, run, run, run that by me again, then. How, how's yeah. that work? She is creating a mask that is Trell. That is an autonomy. That is an avatar. And is so, that an entity? Is that a concrete? Can I, can I, can I point suit. to this? I'm going to call it a mecha suit. Okay. Okay. So it's a, and right a construct. Now, it's, it's a construct, yes. Okay. Like, and like up until now, it's like autonomy has been remote controlling that on schedule. Okay. And she is preparing Telson to like, she's going to pick up Telson, put her in the mecha suit, and then she's trail. And like merge and maybe like merge, and merge the mecha them suit into and, one yeah. thing. Okay. Okay. That, that is, that is a general, has general similarities to what I think is going on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, so it's like, I think we're more similar than in what I was saying earlier than you may have interpreted from what yeah, I was saying. Yeah. Okay. I do like the mecha suit idea. Um, <laughs> it, it makes me think of a little. And, and I don't quite know why, but it makes me think of like cognitive shadows, but inversed. And I don't know if that mm. makes sense to anyone else, right? So when you when someone becomes a cognitive shadow, their soul, some arcanist in world would interpret that as <laughs> <laughs> yeah. their soul being uh, replaced by a carbon copy of you know it's the same thing, but it's made of investiture. And so this is kind of the inverse process, right? You are creating the shell that is going to become the person's soul, but you don't have a person yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I do want to say, I feel like there's, I feel like what Evgeny was saying in that there has never formally been a trail avatar and mm-hmm. what Ian and David are saying can both be true. Like, I, I yeah, yeah. It, right in that, I think there's room for autonomy needing to do prerequisite work to this investiture to make the mm-hmm. a- to make the avatar work. And you could kind of call that trail, but the formal trail avatar that would rule the yep. planet formally, that doesn't she, that did not exist. That, that didn't she needs happen. to no. that didn't she quite happen. To, right. She needs to create the mantle of power. But she hasn't given that mantle to anyone. Yeah, That's and, and yes. I can see that that needs autonomy to do specific things that is unclear. So I, I think both can be valid in a manner of speaking. Thank you for mantle of power, <laughs> the fantasy version of what Mecca I was trying to make. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, like, perfect. And yeah, it's like the mecha suit is or mantle is a recent construction. It Telson. hasn't been sitting vacant for a thousand Tels- years. Telson is the new winter lady. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the only other thing that I have to say kind of on this sort of, I feel like we're kind of like wrapping up on this yeah. autonomy mm-hmm. trail stuff. Uh-huh. I do not put a lot of stock in Bobadin as a vessel existing as an independent entity at this stage. I think that we've seen that with basically every shard, like they are getting subsumed or they become incredibly weak and die. Even Raze, which we told was a really good match for his shard, was on his last legs. And was really weak. And, and, yeah. Yeah, it was, was quite weak. And so I don't think that... I think Bobadin set a lot of the initial tone for the way that autonomy has come to exist. Like, I think that is probably the reason, a reason that autonomy exists in this way instead of the other, the more traditional way we see the other shards exist. But I don't think that there that like I don't know why Bavadin would be more present than any other ancient vessel at this stage, which we've all seen to be pretty weak. Almost. I I have something for you. 
Okay. Which is like autonomy makes avatars. Presumably, like, particularly for the ones that are pure power, she has some influence on how the personality manifests. What if she made an avatar of herself that is Baverdin? <laughs> Oh my god. She's like, well, okay, like I know I'm gonna get subsumed, but like I I need to still be in control of things. So I'm gonna make a copy of myself, like backup of my personality. I mean I don't know if I believe that, but leaving that possibility aside, uh yeah. I, I agree with you, David, uh that like I I don't think splitting Bavadin from the chart is useful, but I think we can see mm-hmm. autonomy being filtered through Bavadin still, right? Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, I I agree. Like Bavadin is Bavadin and autonomy are the same thing, right? Is there is there anything that you would attribute to Bavadin in particular? Uh, I think mostly just the uh, do it my way and like the grand plan that is uh, autonomy. That it's not oh, just like. like it, Oh, do what you want to be autonomous. It's like, no, be autonomous my way. Like that. I yeah. think that's the Bavadin. OK, philosophy. like the, the fact that it that really only one person gets to be autonomous, kind of looking there talking about yeah, the way the right. city works. Yeah. OK, right. OK, right. That, yeah. I see that as being possible. All right. Yeah. And I think the methodology of creating avatars, I think that's coming more from Bavadin. OK, like I don't think any like if some rando person took up autonomy, I don't think that would be like necessarily be a natural inclination. OK, yeah, like that's coming from what was Bavadin. And, okay. and I also feel with like creating avatars. It's probably not easy to do for a shard to do because mm-hmm. I mean, there, there's probably costs associated with it and it's just kind of difficult and maybe and autonomy is probably just the one who figured it out first. And has just been like, no, this is like sort of my thing that I've been like really thinking about like shard mechanically, right? Whereas other shards have been thinking of other things and other things that they're making. I don't know. Mm-hmm. There, I think there is a lot about other shards and avatars. Isn't yeah, there? they they can make avatars, but autonomy, like that's kind of autonomy's thing. Oh, I think I was thinking of one that was something on the lines of they're not particularly relevant now, but other shards may have used them in the past or something. Oh, like that. interesting. I would have to. I probably want to confirm that. I, I, I think it's a non answer that you're thinking of. Uh, my, my thought was just. Thinking of long term shardic constructs, they're kind of complicated and specific to make. Like I'm mm-hmm. thinking about how preservation made the miss to do a lot of specific things so that I that when preservation isn't there, then like it's still doing its thing. That's probably oh, pretty just cha- an avatar. No, 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 I, no. I, <laughs> I think it could have been become an avatar over time. Like if like preservation had left the planet and left the mists doing their thing, I think they would eventually become an avatar. I've got another related question. I did oh, find God. that wob though. Oh yeah. And just tell, tell it's the not a, and it is not a non-answer. Uh, oh, okay. Cool. Let's do it. Does it. Do, wheel. do any other shards utilize avatars the way autonomy does, Brandon? Uh they have in the past. I okay. can't say for sure if they are doing so now or not. So oh, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I was thinking of the second half when I uh, <laughs> Yeah, the second half is, second half is of a but okay, here's my question. Okay. Do we think there's any possibility that any of the gods brand on Rashar started out as an avatar? Potentially even the Storm Father prior to <laughs> Honor being killed. Oh, there is a wob about oh, no. New Relic and yeah, oh, that's yeah. the other one. Macaque. Macaque. Yeah. That is something I wanted to bring up oh, yeah. earlier. Okay. Another because it's like Theologically, there are strong Trelegism yeah, oh yeah. parallels. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Austri is another one people have brought up as mm-hmm. an option. Mm-hmm. I like that one too. Yeah. Yeah, because that's not the same. What was that wob about Austria that was like weird? There, there was one in the like the last few years that was like Austria. Austria is like, not like exactly the same as. This is not in our preparation yeah. for this episode. <laughs> that we're just like yeah. conversation well, goes in a weird place on this. Because like there's the, the part I lashed on is like a uh, Vasher says something along the lines of like, I don't understand why Austrism turned against awakening. And it's like, oh, like if this is 
autonomy making a play, like mm. distrusting like the endowment magic. Yeah, I think it was something like Ostra and endowment not quite being the same. Something mm-hmm. like that. It was less mm. clear than that, I think, and more cagey. But mm. but that that is very interesting that other shards have mm-hmm. used avatars. I feel like it's probably easier to do the, uh, hey, have a set of power that you set aside and it sort of grows into a thing. Like, that's probably mm-hmm. mechanically easier, maybe. But, I mean, I don't know. But it's, it, yeah, it's mechanically easier, but it's harder to guarantee results. That's, that's definitely true. I mean, how... How useful were those avatars that the other shards used? Who knows? Mm-hmm. Open question. Uh, Wob from 2015 okay. says, Austri, is that also endowment? Uh, and, and there's a reference to genders. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brent says, no, Austri is not. Yeah. Who do you think Austri is? Since it's not endowment, I personally think it's a return from long ago. It's a very good conclusion. Oh, man. Maybe it just came up on an episode more uh, recently, but I was like, huh, interesting. I mean, we can definitely anticipate a lot of these religions of like, hey, here's this different mythology. Like, it's very plausible that this is another seeded religion of autonomy, right? Like, there's probably Mm -hmm. a crap load of those. Yeah. Yep. I, I kind of like the idea of looking out for religions that deal with like, the one versus the many that, yeah. that seems like it could mm-hmm. be a, a telltale sign of autonomy's involvement yeah. it doesn't need to be right but it i think it mm-hmm. could be neat on a world building level mm-hmm. yeah i'm looking forward to when we find one that she is the entire pantheon like that yeah I mean, one that i'm looking for going back to first of the sun we know patrick yeah like yeah it's, they're, the, pantheon. Like, the, it's the pantheon <laughs> islands like there's many like people I, like I'm aware. Like, are they all <laughs> becoming sentient, or is it just the one island? I mean, that's I don't an open know. question. It seems like they are I, at least some of them are personified, right? Some of them are just personified. But the, no, yeah, they got, they've all got like names. And mythology, but yeah. Patri, like we know, is also legitimately an entity. Yeah. Well, I, I meant like in terms of a like Patchy's the father, and we have like one of them is the little. <laughs> yeah. There's a little daughter or a little daughter. Yeah, it's yeah. the only other named one. Uh, yeah. they're, not, they're not magic, though. Nobody, no magic birds are drinking water out of these islands. So, I mean, yes, they are. <laughs> I believe, like, like AVR, like, do nest on each of the islands. It's just but like they, they all, all have, have to go to Patchy to the eye. As and if youth. they don't, they don't get their magic. Like, I mean, yeah. like, like, so that's what I'm saying, Ian. Oh, like. Okay. Yeah, there's there's no magic water that they're drinking out of or magic fruit they're eating yeah. on their Worms. island. They have to go to Patchy. I I do want to see the autonomy planet with ten avatars of autonomy on it or something like that. That that that, that yeah. I can imagine those avatars are competing against each other, right? Like mm-hmm. that would totally be like an autonomy thing, right? Of like which is the most <sighs> oh, exceptional yeah. of the the avatars here, right? Like that's totally in line here. It depends on how they're constructed. Oh, yep. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because, like, Cause, if she's going for, I am making Game of Thrones world. <laughs> yes, they will be fighting. Yeah. Other combinations could exist. Yeah. Where, yeah. like, they I, are. The four nations lived in harmony sort of thing. I, if they are more spren like uh, investiture, gain, sapiens, they are probably, like, their intents are probably going to be more in line with autonomy itself. And so their goals are probably going to be more in line with one another but if it's you know 10 people who have all been chosen by autonomy because of their exceptionalism and drive and and ambition okay, sure. really then uh-huh. they are probably going to to want to uh outdo one another okay that's an interesting thought all right you know mm-hmm. we got to talk about to to end this up we got to talk about the perpendicularity and the men of golden red because uh <sighs> Because we, we haven't really mentioned it in the podcast, but like Telson's doing a thing. But also if Telson fails, Autonomy's just going to go invade and like kill everyone, I guess. Like that's just going to be the thing that Autonomy yeah. does. And they let's let's what if we read and we talk about just in Lost Metal 60, uh, what these men of Golden Red are? Why don't we just read that? So. Marasi is like in this pool that they're constructing at the community. 
She stepped forward, then felt the most awful premonition. She was close enough that she saw them in a place with a dark sky and misty ground. So cognitive realm. Uh, Yep. Mm -hmm. Thousands of inhuman soldiers with golden skin and glowing red eyes, living statues. They carried rifles of an advanced design and their stares seemed to bore holes in her mind. The men of golden red had arrived. Bearers of the final medal, Miles had called them. Destroyers. Uh, And then there's another quote that, like, someone needed to command them through, which was interesting. Uh, And Marasi's just like, yeah, that's not. Um, I so the way I read that was about intent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, They're they're not stepping through a door. They have to want to cross over to the physical. And that's in the context of her intending to send her grenades over into Shadesmar. Oh, no, you are right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they were coming through. She understood it in a flash. You had to want to go to come through the portal to command it to let you through. They were beginning the process. Okay, yeah, you're you're right. I mm-hmm. I miss reread it last night. Uh, and yeah, so she uses the intent to send the grenade through. Yeah, that's totally correct. Yeah, they're taking their time, apparently, just chilling. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, although I, I like the cadmium to really trap them as they're part of it. That's, yeah, that's yeah that was that was cool. that was neat. Uh, if you don't think about it too much. Yeah, let's not. Uh, but OK. And also earlier, Twin Soul. Yes. Oh, yes. Them, Twin Soul talks about these as well. Yes. Says that autonomy has access to some very specialized troops, hard to control, dangerous to unleash. Yikes. <laughs> I know their I know their destructive power personally. While I'm more frightened of that bomb, an invasion by autonomy's forces could also be catastrophic. Yeah. Jeez. I am yeah. terrified for later eras when we're gonna see these dudes on screen and they're gonna be terrifying. And, and like, okay, where are these guys from? Because yeah, yeah. we we like they say Scadriel and uh, Taldane. Autonomy's homeworld are the two that have like electricity and seem to be sort of like the furthest advanced technologically, despite the fact that they are also worried about falling behind in a kind of confusing way. <laughs> yes. So where are these spacemen with laser guns coming from or whatever, you know, like or or, or is it just like kind of advanced, but they're like still pretty standard weapons? Like, I don't understand. I, I don't think they're laser guns. I I'm imagining them as laser guns. <laughs> they are. Yeah. I'm thinking blasters, man. I think they are just advanced gunpowder technology like like m16s now or something right but yeah. but i do believe that all of those dudes are heavily invested by autonomy with the glowing red eyes right like that i totally they're not, believe they're not fused are you sure no i'm not sure and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely not sure are the men of golden red actually people like organic human yeah. people or are they some sort of magical construct yeah. like lifeless or something it, it, the living statue reminds me of the cows phantoms right mm-hmm. i initially read them as lifeless myself on a but, first read yeah. i thought of them as like metal not not robots in the sense that we think of robots but like metal men animated by magic so 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 like <laughs> awakened metal people like, like an awakened iron man suit you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah 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 uh can can i provide an alternative crazy theory <laughs> this is this is a crazy is theory no? this is jess's yeah yeah okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right who who else have golden skin iriali what if odium lent some iriali to autonomy and autonomy has like super invested them with tech i presume the tech is coming from taldane yeah i guess guess. they have gunpowder so yeah 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 yeah. uh and i mean we don't know how they have advanced in the long Mm -hmm. time since autonomy has sealed off taldane i don't know whatever we don't even yeah is it open now we don't even know when that is like i have no idea when taldane is available and when it's cut off yeah but like, uh, obviously, there are problems because Twinsel has personally interacted with these 
people and they yeah that's my big flag yeah but like gold skin ariali yes uh, that's pos that's that is possible it's not impossible here it's not impossible it, it does seem like they've been around for a while uh but odium and autonomy there's there's room for them to have interacted but definitely eerie going under the thrall of odium around oathbringer time that doesn't leave a lot of room for them to for odium to lend some troops to taldane and for autonomy to do special stuff and for them to rampage maybe a decade yeah right exactly uh it's, it's tight yeah and I, I kind of like I read that twin soul comment is like maybe they are involved with whatever is going on on his planet. Yeah, so totally. Like, right. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, totally plausible. So if we're, if we're talking about the potential for there being Iriali super soldiers that are owned by mm-hmm. Odium, potentially, mm-hmm. that it's a great explanation for why travel to Rashar through Shadesmar is difficult right now, according to what sure. the ghost bloods are yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, it. it and like, who knows what's going to happen in Stormlight 5? Because this is between 5 and 6, mm-hmm. right? I can't imagine it gets... It doesn't sound like it's nice, <laughs> though. Yeah, because like, even Chris mentions in the um, Arctum Unbounded letter that like, hey, it's dangerous here. Odium is present. Like, yikes. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. a little dangerous. And like, yeah, and you think like, now that they've got the Oath Gates working too like it's not like oh the cultivation's perpendicularity is held by somebody Mm. it's like Mm -hmm. these other the other potential ways through are also apparently not accessible yeah that's i keep flip-flopping the order of era two and (laughs) arc one of stormlight in my mind like but like it always the one that like the one we're not talking about is later yeah of course and so it breaks it keeps breaking my brain yeah so i i I don't know. I, I do just like golden skin, though, but it does definitely remind me more of like sort of like armored soldiers that just happen to be gold. Right. But, you know, mm-hmm. you always got to worry about these gold, gold mm-hmm. people. I feel like a consistent point that's brought up with the Ariali is when they leave, do they le- do all of them leave or are mm-hmm. some left behind? Yep. And so, mm-hmm. like, it's the possibility that this is a group of Ariali that predates Rashar yeah, and is from that planet yeah. before true. that autonomy and like. If they're bouncing from planet to planet, at some point, they're going to end up on a planet with substantial autonomy influence. Yeah. If I had to guess. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And maybe yeah. maybe like most of them left, but some of them were like corrupted by autonomy? Question mark. Yeah. Co-opted, is, Eric. Co-opted. You know, <laughs> well, what co-opted. is corruption? That's a negative Enlightened. term. Enlightened. Um, yeah. I think Iriali, like, if they are humans, I think they're Iriali. Just like from the golden skin Mm-hmm. That is fairly unique in the Cosmere. I don't think Brandon would do that with two unrelated sex. Agreed. I'm. I want to hop back to Austri possibly uh-huh. being related to autonomy. Oh, okay. And it's like okay. these could just be awakened constructs. Like, yeah. Uh yeah. They definitely could be. That's like that was my initial read. Was I was like, oh, like. You don't need to feed your army. Like there, there's a reason Basher liked it. You know, Many. yeah. Uh, an interesting mechanical thing is like the glowing red eyes definitely reminds me of you know how autonomy's like eyes glowing red and like autonomy sort of assuming direct control. But mm-hmm. Twin Soul says they're hard to control, so it makes it seem like. Autonomy is not like literally directly commanding yeah. these troops, right? Like mm-hmm. that's what Twin Souls line sort of refers to, right? Yeah, it, it's I, so tough with autonomy since we know that their aesthetic is red and corrupted vesture is red, which I also think is probably not unintentional. That's a fun little since yeah, they like yeah, to kind right. of bop around and be everywhere. Kind of makes sense mm-hmm. to me, but I did yeah. think that it could be it, it essentially like. Make a suits, right? Yeah. Go back. And then autonomy just like plops herself in them. And this is now her unstoppable army. And they're all like a hive mind because she control- controls all of them. And that gives them like synergy and tactical advantage and things like mm. that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the difficult to control bit is more reminiscent of like the call loss than it is of so, uh, empty vessels. So that that to me makes it seem like they're more... Huh, 
autonomous constructs. <laughs> yeah. uh, that or, like, or the thrill. That's also another instance. Yeah, of, yeah, right, right. The other thing that's floating around in my head is that lifeless, like uh, uh, Brendan said, it's like they keep them in the dark and that's a bad idea because lifeless are oh. more aware than people yeah. think mm-hmm. they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's... But, be- them being constructs doesn't mean they're non-sapient. <sighs> that is true. That is a total awaken- awakening thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, like, that might be, it's like, like, might be where the difficulty in controlling them is, like, you 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 have to override the personality that is yeah. there. Very much like the Coloss, in a way, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and, and they have to have some measure of cognitive things in order for them to will themselves through the portal which like they yep. mm-hmm. they need to have the mental the cognitive faculty to do that right to yeah. have mm-hmm. intent yeah yeah no that's i that's definitely definitely interesting i God. am uh, w- one other irioli thing they definitely okay. they definitely reference golden haired people living in building that woman who is the conspiracy theorist. Oh yeah, there's there's oh, like yeah, some yeah, quite yeah, a yeah, yeah. Or whatever. So yeah. yeah, you never know. You never know where you might find an Ariali. Uh, yeah, you know the the Herdazian tells them. About, well, that's not the yeah. Herdazian, but the, the, the Chowda. Chowda. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the yeah. Cosmere references high here. That, so I got to get real quick. Like it just got to the Shattered Plains a couple years ago. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, Rashar's cut yeah. off, David. Rashar's cut, cut off. off. It's cut off. Well, I'm sure there were a few. People you can you can export, that. not import. Yeah, yeah exactly. Maybe, maybe. Brandon uh, has been very. It's like there's more world happers than we previously thought. Like there uh, on Roshar, there's a sizable like off world population. They're just living their lives and aren't relevant to anything. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. They are immigrants. So I would just love a reference to one of Lopin's cousins who is <laughs> selling chowder on Scatrail or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a misty place. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about. It. Yeah, he, he went a, a long way, Gancho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't know if there's much more to go off on the men of Golden Red, although they are terrifying. I'm terrified. Like, I th- there is one thing that is not new, yeah. but I think we would be remiss not to mention that, uh-huh. and that is the thematic meaning behind the colors. Oh, oh yeah, That's yeah, yeah. True, true. Gold, true. which has been established to be Odium's color, yes, yes, and red, indeed. which is now established to be Autonomy's. Well, but that could more be <sighs> like a co-opted like corrupted investiture thing that uh, that's autonomy's thing right Uh, yeah shardic colors (laughs) are they do the experiment we have the spectrographic nonsense that is true that is true that's a fundamental property Odium isn't gold though; it's purple. Like yeah, that's, right. a, that's the ultra violet. violet. So yeah, like that, that is true. Oh that, yeah, you're right. It is violet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah so like, I, like I felt like the gold and odium. That was almost like a like I'd have to see another book because I feel like he was like kind of purpley and Oathbringer and kind of gold and rhythm of war. It, and now I'm like, what is he? I remember odium appearing in part two Oathbringer, like presenting as like old man gold white yeah. like that was how he presented but like yeah that's the, more of a raised thing isn't it the power yeah. itself is like that dark burning violet in a sense right mm-hmm. that's where it ended at like yeah, when yeah, he yeah, finally yeah. like burned through all the colors yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah okay yeah. yeah so i think presentation wise like it's complicated because <laughs> brendan's talked about ruin and preservation are white and black because they're so polarized and are in contact with each other yeah but we know red is the color of corrupted investiture yeah like shalash says that climax of with bringer and autonomy does go around co-opting things Mm -hmm. so it's like i can see why thematically her color is red because like that that's the gold though the gold is weird and it's like also being like magically the color in the spectrograph i'm like yeah yeah I, that does seem pretty real mm-hmm. yeah yeah right exactly it's the same experiment yeah i mm-hmm. here's my crack theory uh red and gold these are light songs colors these are light songs <laughs> from his palace uh, Damn, these it's, are, it's those, these are, it's those these are, lifeless that he has control yeah, over it is. yeah no it is yeah. these are 2011 theories people We've been saying this for a long time. Ostre has taken command of those and has souped them up. And yep. that, uh, allow, me, is allow me to offer a counter crack theory <laughs> because uh, 
red and gold are also the colors of Navani's wedding dress. And oh, so yes. we don't get fused the Delinar, we get fused Use Navani. Navani. And Navani's Navani's wedding dress. Dress. Yeah. Navani <laughs> sacrifices herself, so Dalinar isn't uh the fused yeah. rampaging, it's Navani. And and so she takes over the oh. the Knights Radiant and the Alethi armies and then just gives them uh uh, I love my dress. New coat of paint. You're all, you're <laughs> all, get, go, get all, you're all gonna wear my dress. I, I think I just now realized I'd rather have Dalinar die than Navani. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 put your there dislikes below. Um, yeah, there we go. Uh, you brought up the dress, and now that all that's in my brain is the dress that broke the internet. Oh, oh yeah, black versus white gold. I'm like, mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. how can how does that relate mm-hmm. into all of this? all of the uh, all of uh, autonomy's armies? How, wear how is that in the spectrograph on the experiment? Uh, <laughs> or, when, when, when we do that, yeah, like oh, I'm very ex- curious what the spectrograph of like harmonium, lorasium, and atium are because like oh. white and black. How does that relate to it's any of right. this? Like, yeah, I feel like Brandon didn't show us that because he was like, I don't want to decide on that. <laughs> and so, well, was- he did. He did uh, tell us that like the, the half of harmonium that was more lorasium aligned was like bluish. So I would expect like a light blue or something. Maybe uh-huh. I guess it was just a color that they looked when he. I don't know. That, the, honestly, when he was splitting it, and they're like, "Oh, it looks like lorasium," and I'm like, "That lorasium was not described as glowing white." I'm virtually certain Vin would have been like, "What is this?" You know, like. <laughs> but it's vague in era yeah. one, so he can say like, like, "Oh yeah, it's totally." <laughs> it's in the words of founding. Don't worry about it. I just can't forget. We thought Lorasium was green at one point. That's true. That's, That's true. a persistent myth. Yeah. Persistent. I don't know why. I think the last main men of red and gold, gold and red, however you prefer <laughs> it, uh, topic that we wanted, that we should address is the very first time we heard about this, which is the very end of Alloy of Law, where Miles in his final words calls out essentially that the men of gold and red bear of the final medal are coming and, and like to prepare for judgment from them essentially we can pull up the actual quote if you want to read that yeah but but where does this come from is this tra- is this trellism theology is he it, there is a slight reference in annotation that miles may have had a spike which is also another possibility and there's a wob that says something something weird is going on with miles or pay attention to miles or something like that mm-hmm. i feel like presumably these creatures who are autonomy that are like like that we're talking with suit right these just autonomy things probably talked to some people and miles heard about it from them i don't know if he has a direct connection to (sighs) autonomy but like that mythology maybe got around and he's like a crazy believer right so he would probably Mm -hmm. be one to pick up on it rather than like other people are like yeah so he's drinking the kool-aid yeah absolutely yeah there is uh i i wanted to mention this earlier and i couldn't find a good time for it but the kind of the timeline of autonomy's plans Mm -hmm. is interesting to me yeah because for a long time all the way up until the end of like the epilogue of bands autonomy is not really doing much directly right yeah, the right. set yeah. is furthering her plans but that's about it and then with the epilogue uh she appears to go oh we need to annihilate all life on this sphere <laughs> and with the knowledge of the two parallel plans happening in the lost metal right so we have some of the members of the set uh led by telson going well let me approach that from the other direction. We have autonomy saying we need to destroy all life on this planet. I am sending the men of the two colors that can be used interchangeably. Yes. And then Telson is like, no, 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 no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I can prove to you that I can control this yeah. world. Let me let me show you that I can do that. And and in her head, she's thinking, I will prove myself by blowing up the basin and assuming control. Yeah. So Bavadin's plan is send the super soldiers, kill everyone. But that's a plan that that she decides to enact after the events of bands. Yes. And Miles is sprouting fanatic stuff oh, at okay. the end of Alloy a year ago. Mm-hmm. So maybe maybe these super soldiers are just like part of the mythos 
and and that's why he's he's saying that that is an interesting perspective i could see mm. that being like if, what is the purpose of the religion that autonomy has set up here you know like she could get loyalty via other ways but she's got true believers she's got theology that she's decided to develop for a purpose and part of that is potentially instructional and part of that is potentially obey autonomy otherwise here is a potential consequence that could occur <laughs> this this and, consequence doesn't yeah. happen in the afterlife it's like no we got it we got guys <laughs> they will kill you <laughs> yeah so i like it's it's very possible that miles is like believes he's fulfilling the will of trell and that they are defying the will of trell by killing him and that they're setting themselves up to be judged yeah because mm-hmm. of that interesting but it doesn't really answer why brandon's saying something's weird going on with miles then because it's not that weird to get yeah that's <sighs> kind of odd we also we also learned that he was a cycle which i don't know if that tells us much yeah i don't know i mean the cycle a cycle is a high enough rank to get a trillium spike yeah in yeah the lost metal yeah uh, yeah but i don't believe they were i don't know maybe they were testing it out on the level people back yeah then. it didn't seem like there was I mean, we didn't we didn't really know a lot about the set in Alloy. Like, hard to say how much no. hemallergy they they had. Uh, one thing I did want to mention about like autonomy's direct involvement is I feel like autonomy slash trail made those uh, hemallergic constructs like in shadows, right? Because oh, yeah. like you 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 need a shard to like know how to where to put those spikes to make a weird construct. Mm-hmm. Right? For sure, like, you just think... have to. Yeah, either that or like I mean. I will leave out the possibility that maybe Palm learned enough from the Lord Ruler, but I don't think that even makes sense because the Lord Ruler would have made those if he'd had the ability so to like, create I mean, a new contract. Pr- presumably, I mean, with a Trallium Spike, maybe Autonomy directly gave that knowledge to Palm, perhaps? Yeah. Like that, that's plausible. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was another thing. I, w- I wish Palm had come from this book because I feel I know, like there was room for some interesting, like, yeah. Wax is confronting the person who drove the one of the loves of his life mad no bloody yeah, tan in this book no, no information bloody on bloody tan whether yeah. bloody tan was controlled by autonomy or anything who knows but and, wax and, isn't controlled anymore <laughs> by anyone I, which was not. this is this is so upsetting to me and i'm yeah. sure i will i will talk about it or have talked about it in my reactions to the lost metal the whole someone else moves us book ends the entire series yes we have the the prologue of the first book that almost ends with someone else moves the slow man and then wax shoots him and at the end of this one with wax's epilogue harmony sends him a note and he's like no one else moves you mm. oh, that's yep. nice and we don't get a resolution on bloody tan yeah no, nothing literally nothing like the last like and nor did we in bands right it was just like Oh, Lessie's wearing or Palm is wearing Bloody Tan's face. That's pretty crazy and weird. Like that's that's after era two. This is definitely things we need to ask Brandon, because it's like there are some loose ends here that we need some damn answers. Yeah. Secret yeah. or history. And I wouldn't be surprised if like this is something Brandon didn't expect us to latch on as hard as we did. Why? Don't know. But like it's, it's only like, the inciting incident. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, and so like he didn't want to interfere too much with the theorizing for era two while it was still being written. But now that it is over, like he can go back and like talk about things more because yeah. bloody tan moved too fast. Did he have he, saw some stuff. he said he saw he saw death and he saw the survivor. And I'm like, OK, what? I don't know. We, we don't need to get way off track there, but we do need eventually. Hopefully we got some wobs on this. Yeah. But if we don't, we're going to have an episode of things era two didn't do. And bloody Tan's going to be on that list. We are. We are bloody stands on this on this podcast. <laughs> God. Oh, one more. What's the final medal? That they're referring to. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I. <laughs> I'm gonna say Trellium sure, uh, cool. because it's Trellism. Like, of course, they're gonna make their metal the special one. Like, yeah, it's the last metal you'll ever need. Like, whatever. it does seem to do whatever the plot needs it to do. So it does yeah. seem pretty useful. <laughs> it is the most recently created, too. So chronologically, it does come the last. Final metal. And so that's, yeah. that's, fa- that's fact. 
Yeah, it's it's yeah. the metal to like and all other metals, right? So sure. this kind of yeah. but I conquest. I, I don't think it's the lost metal. No, but I do no, think no. it's the final metal. <laughs> <laughs> what is the lost metal? <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, our last lost topic. Lost metal was the friends we made along the way. That's that's right, <laughs> and it, they were very lost. Uh, so our last thing to talk about is how weird this perpendicularity is. That autonomy, like what what is it that uh, Shy says? There are planets where autonomy has created such portals unexpectedly against all understood mechanics. Hilarious. Like Brandon <laughs> speaking to us. <laughs> it's like, don't think like, about I'm going to break much. some rules here, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Meanwhile, Chris is in the next room just clawing her eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing that's weird with this, right? With the perpendicularity. The perpendicularity. <laughs> that the men of gold and red dust don't go through uh, Harmony's perpendicularity in the south. Right? They, they don't do that for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, we are told that it's secure, closely monitored and controlled or something like that. Yeah, something like that. That I like guess they I weren't just, worried about it. But these are like we just got told these are like the biggest, like most monstrous group of, of soldiers in the yeah. entire. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah. The southerners, who's who's controlling it? it? Is it, it said, a ghost blood cell? It, yeah, this says. Fortunately, the local perpendicularity, the portal to reach this world. Also, nice confirmation. There's one of them. Hey, uh, is mm-hmm. far to the south and carefully controlled. But like, still. It seems like these dudes can like mess you up. So, right? I mean, maybe maybe it's just more convenient to like build a brand new one in the north than to use the one in the south or whatever. Yeah, or maybe. Harmony could interfere somehow with his own I think it's most likely Harmony could interfere in some just, like, way. Shut it close or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just do Not something through. Through. They're going through kind of right in half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Give him the um, the deepest ones treatment. <laughs> Be, uh, before we get too much into the uh-huh. perpendicularity, I want to go over the understood rules of how perpendicularity <laughs> yeah, sure, works. Let's do that. Yeah, you probably do Which that. Is, from our understanding, when a shard invests into a world, it suffuses the world, and there's some sort of investiture water cycle humidity thing going on spiritual humidity spiritual humidity and that there are there is naturally a point where that energy coalesces and that forms liquid investiture perpendicularity and there is room for shards to like mess with that uh because like preservation did that with like ruins perpendicularity with like the pits right like that's a weird situation yes and honors mm-hmm. perpendicularity is not yeah. cool and it yeah. moves around yeah. so it's like yeah. there are more rules than we know yeah but so what i think is going on is that they're making the pool of liquid investiture without the entire cycle of investiture flowing through the world yeah mm-hmm Here's here's the weird thing about all this. Mm -hmm. They specifically I can only assume that this is strictly necessary to use pure investiture to do this, because if autonomy had that option, then Marasi couldn't like then the portal couldn't have been closed. So, like, I think the Mm -hmm. only thing that makes sense is they have to use purified investiture to make this. So let's make sure we're on the same page. Yes. The reason we think this has to be pure investiture is because mm. all of the mistings are able to just gulp it like gobble it up yeah just like gobble the door. it up and use it yeah yeah and doesn't, yeah. doesn't it say that it's pure it says I it looks like it, it. Okay. Okay. Like, thinks it looks, it like, the looks jar. like uh it, it and uh the pool had to hold thousands of jars worth so she's oh she's thinking it is very much like this yeah and like where did they get thousands of jars well, so that, like, um, right that's that's the thing right like how do you get that pure investor onto skadriel to the community because they're doing it from the physical side right dumping the investor yeah yes so i think we know investiture like sticks to places like mm-hmm. it's hard to get a t- aspected investiture to move around so yeah. it's like it might just be a transport thing it's like to get it to where they need it to go, it has to be pure. 
still don't really know what that means, but okay. Yep, right, exactly. Or like it could be like presumably they're using Harmony's per- uh, perpendicularity to smuggle to get in here. Sm- so, they're, so they're smuggling oh yeah. it in. So it's like it has to be pure to go through it. Oh, because we because there's like a thing where like when Vin goes into the pool, like her earring, which is invested by ruin, yep. like causes issues. Mm-hmm. How much of that is because ruin and preservation are yeah. attuned, or is it how much of that is like bringing another shards investiture into a shard pool? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, well, that's also true for inquisitors, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Inquisitors yeah. Well, could take up the well. Well, and I was gonna say because part of me is like, okay, well, maybe that's the case, but why don't you just push more autonomy investor here? You're already investing in the planet, you've made a metal, and you just use that. But if you, they need to get to the physical realm, I could see Autonomy's investor in particular not playing very nice with going through another shard's perpendicularity just because we already see it's repelled by everything. That That's a really good point, yeah. Uh, that yeah. the Autonomy investiture just doesn't seem to like that. And if there's <laughs> any shard that has that property, mm-hmm. Autonomy would be the one, right? That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I do want to say, I think pushing just pushing more investiture into the planet could have worked i think it would have taken longer than she wanted because like that would be creating it the normal way it's like investing the whole planet oh sure that's allowing a, it to form naturally i dis i think that that would be an option but i disagree that she couldn't just like like you mm. know jet some in you know mm. i don't think necessarily that the only way to do that is to invest the planet enough that mm humidity occurs natural you know like mm-hmm. that that seems like the expensive way to do that i think th- on a world that isn't inhabited by another shard that it would be possible but because harmony is there i think he could prevent that level of direct intervention maybe but he couldn't prevent her from making trillium well you know and, like that's the same thing to me <laughs> and, and actually thinking about how did they get the trellium spikes if autonomy investiture yeah. can't go through the perpendicularity? Like, was autonomy just slowly, like, through capital C connections, like, dumping investiture through those connections? I, I don't know. Uh, rather than smuggling spikes through the perpendicularity. Oh, I, I think that this is a metal that is native to Scadrial now. And whatever yeah. autonomy has done, this is mm-hmm. in some form, uh, not unlike the pits of Hassan. Exactly. There is Trillium yeah. coming into existence on Scadria. Yeah. The pits is exactly the analogy I was thinking of. Yeah, that's definitely a question to add to the list. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ask right now. Of, of uh, Rafos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And here's the other weird thing about the perpendicularity. It needs to be around a bunch of metalborn. What? Why? That the funny, that's the funniest part because it, there needs to be a reason for why they put it right next to the thing that could destroy so the plot it. Can happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, to be honest, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's, it's super weird. It's, yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> it it has like planetary alignment vibes, but obviously it has nothing to do with the planets, right? It's just mm-hmm. the perpendicularity can happen in a place where the right conditions align. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, what? A, how would the metalborn even? What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, like, oh, technically we, they're more invested. Sure, slightly. Yeah, I'm like, I guess. I'm like, we I just told. don't see that being a big a big enough factor to actually affect anything. Yeah. They're obviously, like they don't need to be burning the metals. So I'm like, how mm-hmm. is this affecting anything? I don't know. In fact, they can't burn the right. metal. Right? It, yeah. Um, we are told that at metal in high concentrations has like weird effects that, sure. that uh, are probably like perpendicularity ish, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think the implication in the book is that it's something similar, but that doesn't make sense to me mechanically because, like, you can't think of the Starfall's vision mm-hmm. from Stormlight. Oh, you, obviously, yes. You, you <laughs> dump a few hundred nights radiant in the same place. Or think of your ethereal, right? You, you put a few thousand surge binders in the same place. That doesn't inherently warp reality, reality yeah. just because they are there. You, you don't have to be careful at a surge binder convention to not fall well, through. <laughs> and if anything, like, like surge binders 
would be more invested than oh, on yeah. average. Yeah. Well, at least that in our whole Stormlight. Well, yeah. Prince. Well, and like by the pillar, like I feel like honestly, maybe there should be some weird stuff by that pillar. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, like the Metalborn isn't the only prerequisite, but apparently it is a prerequisite. And so maybe you could use Radiance in a similar way that you'd still need to dump a crap load of pure investiture <laughs> to make it work. So maybe you need just enough warping to poke a hole through it. I, that's the best I got, guys. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to like imagine if it's some somehow like <sighs> being near the power of the shard of this planet is helping yeah. like kind of like take this blank slate and like attune it more to the planet so it works correctly. Oh, OK, you sure. Know? Yeah, yeah. OK, or, like um, just so to like actually move it from just like I imagine if they had just poured all that investiture right there they would have got something very like the at metal mines where it's like you're getting weird visions and like reality is maybe kind of breaking down a little bit, but mm -hmm. you're not stepping, you're not sending an army through that. And so you need a little extra secret sauce to get to like, make it actually happen. So people aren't just doing this by mistake places. Turn and, the, turn the window into a door. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Ch yeah. Change that thinness into something specific. And, and for, I don't know. For all we know, autonomy is doing some stuff to this somehow. I don't know. I'm actually now reminded of there being some bob about radiance being blurring the lines between the realms. Oh, you're right. Oh, they're totally because there's Kaladin that, sees Shades Kaladin at one does point. see into Shades Mar at one yeah. point. I'm like, mm, maybe this is a thing. Maybe it is a oh, thing. Okay. Okay. Damn okay. It. Okay. All right. So like. Okay, so that that's a reason, I guess. Sure. But uh, although I will say, I thought that was because they were bonded to a spren and the sprenner of the cognitive realm, and so that was what that fundamentally all their powers are drawn from the cognitive realm, and so yes, that is I think that closeness. I think it's more. It's like they're bonded to a very large chunk of investiture, yeah, and that's, that's what's sure. doing it. I guess, but like you know, people who have a the God King is not seeing into Shadesmar. He is bonded to a very large chunk of investor that happens to reside in the physical realm entirely. Do we have Sousa Bronze points of ever him? seen from Sousa Bronze That's POV? True. That's true. And he, like, well, he's a, he's described it though, and he sees a lot of colors, but he didn't say anything about maybe he's seeing Shades Mar, and that's why. Yeah, maybe that's Nalthus's kind of. <laughs> like he he might be seeing some crazy stuff. Like we don't actually that's know. That's true. Five thousand breaths like, is enough to make, or a thousand breaths is enough to make knife blood. This run's got way more. Yeah. Well, I, I'd be curious. Dark Knight blood. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add to my personal list of questions. Like, can the God King pierce the realms and like see weird stuff? Even slightly. I worth bringing up yeah. that Kaladin only does that when he's like flying very fast. Oh, it, good. It, Let's it, put some it, speed happens, in relativistic stuff. It, happens twice. it stuff. happens twice, right? Uh, one of them is a training montage in Words of Radiance when he's flying through the chasms. Uh -huh. That's what I remember. And and there's one in in the Rhythm of War at the beginning when he's oh. chasing uh, Leshwi. Oh, really? I he also sees uh, hmm. a I dark sky. Rhythm of War. Point. Crap, man. I've read it too many times. So yeah. it's, it's maybe hard. maybe it's about the surge of no, but that's gravitation. I can't even make like a like a connection thing. I don't know. They're using the he's using the adhesion adhesion argent <laughs> he's, adhesion that lets he's, him see. he's using some spiritual adhesion yeah yeah alongside with 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 his gravitation right? yeah 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 he the spiritual gravity he's connecting to the to the cognitive <laughs> sun and the gravity of that boom nailed it uh <laughs> Oh, I mean, okay. you you make this joke. It's possible, but, though, right? <laughs> uh, I hate it so much. Bondsmiths have adhesion as yeah, well. Exactly. It's not totally insane. It, it's not totally insane. I hate it. <laughs> not totally insane. <laughs> it's also has nothing to do with this podcast. But uh, yeah, it it is somewhat preposterous that autonomy's best plan is smuggle through like two thousand jars of the pure <laughs> investiture that I got somewhere. Through Harmony's perpendicularity, like, it, does that a, seem to be what the plan? Yeah, via airship. Well, it must be via airship, I assume. Sure. To, to the north. Like, <laughs> I don't even understand. And, and then to Bilming? 
to or Burbank. maybe they go to Birmingham directly. But they, might, they, they probably go to Birmingham. Directly. I, yeah, I don't know how Mullish Airlines runs. But look, look, the Southern Continent is much closer Mullinair. to the north north than we expected. They can take a boat. It's easy. Filming yeah, has boats. I, it's like a, a two a day kayak. Trip. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I guess it is possible. I don't know if I like it, but it is possible that the same mechanism that allows for spikes to, as we think, be distilled directly into the physical realm could allow autonomy to continue pumping her investiture directly into the spirit into the physical and it doesn't turn into metal or maybe it does but let's say it turns into liquid instead and then she has like agents that are somehow purifying that and it's just a very slow process i mean that's that's as plausible as anything i don't we don't know, I don't know why she would i don't know why she'd do that there would have yeah, to be another, rule, another reason that she had to purify it after getting it there. But yeah, so it's the only way it can work. Uh, how do you purify investiture? Open question. You need a, a nanopore filter, Eric. You just you, put it you, on the end. Yeah, distill yeah. it and let it age. Oh, good. Distilling. Let's get that <laughs> distilling lob in here. Oh, wait, about... that, was, that was a term that Brandon used for a bunch of things, wasn't it? No, it, don't wasn't it about like atium and loracium and like like you could distill <sighs> yeah. loracium from the mist, which he yeah, yeah, some weird oh, crap yeah. that he doesn't mean actual distillation. Uh, well, I think I feel like they got into that in this book too, when they were talking about how you change, like changing the temperatures of god mm. metals doesn't cause them to behave like other materials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they mm-hmm. change state because of other reasons. Which, yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess autonomy is a bad planner. Autonomy is a bad planner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently, good enough to dump that much pure investiture, and autonomy has access to that much pure investiture. That she I can love, smuggle yeah. that, like, and do this multiple times, by the way, right? Like, this is mm-hmm. this is a thing that she's done. This before. is a thing that she does, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> I know. I'm like, okay. On how many planets is there a perpendicularity, yeah. but not one that she can use? But there, but she needs to create a different one. Yeah, like, how many times <laughs> does this scenario occur where she's like, "Don't worry, I can get the investiture to the physical realm. I just can't send my army that same way." Well, I wonder if it's if it's a situation where there is just no other perpendicularity and she's building her own. Yeah. But, then yeah, but then how, then how do you... does she get the investiture into the realm to build well, to be in the refer physical to you realm? Refer to my previous theory. <laughs> or she's okay. okay. See, it's it's just so complicated. Like, it I just is don't very love it. complicated. It's very cool to see the men of gold and red, but the perpendicularity of like, what is going on here? Just easy answer. There's three perpendicularities. There's one in filming. And I don't know. it's ruins perpendicularity. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, like... I, I approve of shy aka brandon just being like yeah man this portal's weird. Don't don't worry about it too much. It's it's against all odds. And no, it, all known mechanics. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, he's hanging a lantern on it. Yeah. I, I know this is weird. Yeah, oh don't don't, don't try to it. fit that in with the with everything else I've told you. This is its own thing. There's so yeah. many questions here, Brandon. <laughs> I I will say though, it's probably less bizarre than what Down Arnie Shar are doing. That's you know, true. like <laughs> probably to be honest, non sequitur. But this reminds me of uh, Rise of Skywalker. For some force some resurrection, like Al Palpatine has yeah, returned. It, it, like, yeah, somehow like, I'm sure okay. it did happen. We're we're doing that now. That's what this... everyone loves. A complimentary Rise of Skywalker comparison. <laughs> ah, maybe also, we need to do a splinter these... cast on that on the sequel trilogy. Just like uh, <sighs> see, I'll be the positive person because I actually don't think they're that bad. But yeah. you know. they're not. They're not that bad. It's just they're they're very enjoyable to watch. They are fundamentally flawed as stories. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, any final thoughts? We've talked a, a while. Uh, yeah. Any, any, any thoughts? Uh, Trell's. Here's my final thought. Trell's still confusing, even though we learned much more yeah. about Trell. Yeah, we didn't learn everything. No. That's a, a certainty. How are the men of gold and red standing in the Skadrian Subastro, <laughs> which is made of mist, and Hoyd had to ha- use a a corpse shadow ghost thing plastered with investiture, otherwise he would fall through. They're invested. So they yeah. just their their feet just automatically repel it. They don't need to apply a paste, Argent. There you go. Easy. That Unironically, is kind of what I'm thinking. They're just highly invested. 
Although you, you could make the argument, doesn't Hoyt have 200 breaths? Like, yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, like, not a, maybe, maybe at that point he doesn't. Maybe at that point he didn't. That's true. Okay, so he's ago. got he's got some stuff going on. He's, he's he, if you told me Hoyt, like if you said it's Hoyt or the, are those guys more invested? I'd say I don't know. I mean, he held a Don shard, so yeah. I mean, that's 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 a lot that permanently warped him. So yeah, mm-hmm. I am excited to see how this will be important in era three because we have that wall where Brandon said that Trell is like not a not and like in the book as well like the. The implication is Trell is down but not out, even though Telson is dead. So, yeah, we will have to see who becomes Trell. But uh, yeah, I'm just very curious how that will go. Will the set still be relevant? Will we learn more about the religion of Trellism? Will Trellism continue to thrive? Yeah, and become a bigger religion, yeah. or is it going to die off? Like, mm-hmm. lots of questions. Oh, I can't. I can't believe we went an entire episode without making a reference to the single best pun that comes out of this book. Oh, which no. is Trelson. <laughs> oh, it's a good one. It's, That's pretty good. Uh, my yeah. final thought is I'm still annoyed that Bavadin isn't a dragon, apparently, because yeah, he should be. Okay, well, because like the whole like shapeshiftery, multiple masks, it it fits. I think you it think fits. everything fits as a dragon. <laughs> I think no. it makes more sense as a singer. They're shapeshifters. They can fit into anything. I can take a bunch of forms and now she's yeah, she could be a singer. I, I do all. agree it'd be cooler if she was a dragon. For sure. Cooler if more shards were dragons. Okay. <laughs> Aside from the one, the only the solitary the only dragon one. shard. The only yeah, one. that Okay. So mad. It's like it's boring. <laughs> all right, it's time for who's that Cosmere character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia. Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Caw. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send five clues in a character to WTCC at 17shard.com. We read these clues aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess Who's That Cosmere Character. This first one is sent by frequent commenter, Oliver Newcomb. Clue one. This character is literate. Hmm. So many things stream Rashar. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Wayne. It's not Wayne. I like that guess That's because good. he acts like he isn't, but he totally is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He read a book about a bunny. I think. He thinks. <laughs> read some books about electricity. How about Vin- Vinarin? Oh, it is not Renarin. I am going to guess Kadash. No, it is not Kadash. Uh, all right. Clue two. This character travels frequently. Sigzel. It's not Sigzel. That's a good guess. I like that. Uh, I'm trying to remember if Ishik reads Uh-oh. something in, uh, mm. in his interlude in mm-hmm. Way of Kings or not. If he's like reading a date when they're oh, telling him he's late. I forgot the name of the character I wanted to guess. Okay. Well, I mean, I if you describe happens. him well enough, that's fine. But I'm annoyed because I should be remembered. Like, this is not an obscure. Uh, Risen's Babsk. No, oh, it's Vistan. not Vistan. Vist- okay, yeah. Because in, in my head, I'm going Flakov, but that's the slaver. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. I know who I want to guess. And now I've forgotten his name. Uh, <laughs> his, he is the son of Ral Na, who is. Uh, is it T- Talik? Is that his name? Oh, Who's Risen's friend? I think, I think he shows Talik, up in yeah. the start of Dawn Shard. Uh, no, it is <laughs> He's not. He's the Thalen that. trained. Okay, yeah. But that's that's mm-hmm. a good guess. Clue three: This character can swim. Oh, there's a guy who is like uses a. Okay, the, is it like one of Adolin's soldiers who knows what treading water is? His name starts with a P. <laughs> Oh, no, it is not that person. I know exactly who you're talking yeah. about. I don't know their name, but yeah, no. I, 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 I mean, it down our Oh, no, no, yeah, that's, that's, per, that's Perel. Is it Perel? I thought it was Perel. Perel? Yeah. yeah, because that's why we were like, well, who's Vedicar Perel? Is it Perel? Vedicar Perel? And, and no, is it the same the, guy? Is it not? We, don't, we yeah. don't know if it's the same person. We don't know. Oh, yeah. man, this is the most arcane BS in the news that comes from. Did they, well, did it, they well, get like rid of the... Thing, thing, no. yeah. Is it is a weird. treading water thing in the leather bound? No, because I think they like... Because they like made a point of it. Because well, he was like, "We're treading water, sir." And Dalnar's like, "Yeah, it's in words of radiance too." Yeah, but so we don't, know, we don't like, have that. What are you talking about? Like, what does that mean? He's like, "Swimming metaphor, sir." <laughs> now, like, 
Yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah, that. Like that. Yeah, like they make a reference to the fact that it's not a common Okay, thing. yeah, that's that's yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. Cord. It's not cord. Uh, Ian? Kayine? Nope, it's not keen. I'm not saying it. Uh, <laughs> that's the right way to say it, that's unfortunately. Right. Uh, clue four, this character is known to use an invested art. Okay. Shalon. It's not Shalon. Okay, so they're literate. They've known to use an invested art. Invested art. What's the other one? Travels frequency uh, and can uh, uh, Traveled frequently and can swim. Oh my god, we're at four. Uh, we're at four. Did you say white, Eric? What? Yeah, White Sand Eric. Oh no, sorry. Uh, white Sand Eric. <laughs> I, I didn't even hear my own name. I'm like, I, I don't know. No, it's not uh, White Sand Eric. I missed when it was Earth Eric and the original prose draft. And you're like, why is it? Oh got, yeah, it's spelled E R I C. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, and that. you're like. We yeah. got fantasy names, then we got Eric. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm okay. gonna pronounce his name as A. Eric. Yeah. Okay, I'm having trouble with this one. I know. This one's pretty hard. They can swim. Okay, what was, what was the invested art thing specifically? Uh, this character is known to use an invested art. Okay. I'm gonna guess Nas. I don't think he applies to any of that, but I'm it's, out of ideas. It's not Nas. Damn. Who could have guessed? Mm-hmm. He can probably swim. He probably like I'm like he he went to Threnody. They sailed a whole ship across the way. You know, like I'm sure yeah. that's at least in the cultural DNA. Yeah, but you can you can sail a ship without swimming. Mm. You can, yeah. and apparently you can get to the bottom of the ocean maybe without swimming either. Yeah, you can. All right, clue five. This character is proficient with a firearm. Okay, bit of golden red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Is it Bayon? It's not Bayon. Okay, it's. I think it's one of the professors, and I can't remember either of their names. And so, oh, you gotta pick one. There's one, two one of them. Is, one of them is Cinder. Hmm. One, the one of the professors is Cinder. Yeah, that's the other one. Wait, who, who did Ian guess? You said you guessed Bayon. I, you I guess Bayon. Yeah. 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 I know the other, the name of the other it did, professor. Did Evgeny and David want to guess both the professors and uh, one whoever doesn't guess. Cinder. I guess someone who's the traitor. <laughs> I don't uh, remember that is not, which that one is the traitor. Not, that's not Cinder. Traitor. It's not Cinder. Yeah, he's, okay. he's not Cinder. So he's, 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 his okay, name so is John, it's John something. It's John, it's John Akron. It, that is, it, yeah. it, this character, this is not John Akron. You, that guess okay. is incorrect. I lose. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. Do you want well, to guess Cinder, I, Evgeny? <laughs> uh, I don't think he shoots anybody. No, because there's no reason to think that he can swim. And he can't use an invested art. What was I even going with, John Aker? <laughs> oh, that yeah, like <laughs> that's a good. Hey, they they have their their thing. Why are we guessing white sand characters? <laughs> because because of autonomy. No one has. But and no maybe one has, it's who's got a gun. Um, um it's gonna be, maybe it's gonna be Gadriel or well, it's gonna be Gadriel or Heldane. Like yeah, that's true, our true, only true. two options. Yeah, and it's maybe true. the omnibus is out by the time this releases. Maybe oh, we'll yeah, find out. Be. We'll it see. should be. That's a negatory, good buddy. I will be throwing a fit somewhere on the internet if it's not out by Look, now. Look, so. if, if the omnibus came out late enough that we couldn't do an episode, <laughs> dude, guys, I don't know when we're going to get to do an omnibus episode. It's lost metal time. Either we got to do it before the Dragon Steel Con and you already saw it, or you don't, and you'll see it in like March or some crap. I don't we'll know. do it when Secret Project Two comes out, and we'll be like, "What are we talking about?" Yeah, yeah. Smart. Yeah. You know, so we're doing smart. a Secret yeah. Project Two episode. We are. We we'll are. Do, we are. We'll but... do in Secret Project Two yeah, episode. Yeah. Are we going to do a bunch of them? There might be a Wob <laughs> episode too. Question. There might be a Wob. Yeah, there could be a Wob episode. But after I don't that, know. but yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we'll see. A web of connections that Secret Project Two will set off by existing. <laughs> you no, know, not like, at all. We don't know. I, I pray that there's not a web of connections that Secret Project 2 will set off yeah. by existing. All right, Evgeny, what you got, bub? I've got wax. It's not wax. It is actually Alamancer Jack. There you go. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know if any of those things are true because we can't trust a word. So unless Honestly, we I don't know either. Know but presumably he's, he's an thing. Alamancer. And yeah, I presumably he traveled. Uh, I don't know if he swam, but that seems likely. He wrote. He, so he's he literate. Ended up in a river. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so I feel like all those are accurate. In a river. Yeah. At least some of her. His adventures are embellished. But they did happen. I, yeah, like, yeah. I, I believe that he found a cache of Colo spikes. I don't you know. know that he is invested. I think he's he's a he's, he's an a Alamancer. He's it's a, in the name. I, that's his thing. Yeah, he's Alamancer Jack. I I am reasonably certain the stories make ref, like I think the stories make him a mistborn. 
No, the story that that Wayne's ma tells Wayne is that he can fly and get past, and it's a dragon and can eat rocks or whatever. But he, but in there was a the story... actual in the actual alloy of law broadsheet he get he gets tin by licking the walls so he can get tin so he can burn it and that keeps him awake. Is my right? Or he at least references that that has happened at some point to him. I, I remember I, him licking the wall. I got to be <laughs> honest. My elements are Jack Lore is like zero. <laughs> I, have you yeah. ever read it? Have no, you like did no, you read that? No, I even in it. even no. though you own Arcane Unbounded, you didn't just like okay. I yeah, I've not read it. Yeah, that's okay. true. It's yeah. hilarious. Handerwim's annotations so good. I'll get to it sometime. I'm pr- probably. It's much better than in the broadsheet because you don't get the annotations in the broadsheet. That's you just get a good point. Stuff. Yeah, I should probably read it. All right, this next one is from Evelyn Basham, who's also a frequent commenter. Yep. Uh, ooh, characters nice first. Name. Always dangerous. Always <laughs> dangerous. Clue one, this character is male. <sighs> now I just want to think of somebody that's shipped through a postal service. It is literally oh, male. It's M A L E. Okay. Do you, okay. Do you think they compare. ever sent Nightblood like via yeah, the via co- the, the Shadesmar FedEx? To oh, what could possibly go wrong shipping Nightblood with cognitive the silver light, The Silverlight Mercantile. What was it? We got company for it. Yeah, that's on the stamps when they ship stuff. Yeah, yeah. I believe that's a canon thing. Yeah, but but it's also in the um in the Milan. Oh, it is. Oh, it You're is. Right. It is. It is. Yeah. You know, we got a little messenger that. sprite. We will. When, at some point. when she is hanging out with a freaking Shodell. <sighs> mm-hmm. This book is pretty crazy with Cosmere stuff. That's for sure. We got a lot to talk about, guys. I am guessing Quan. It's not Quan. I'm guessing a Lendy. It's not a Lendy. Copy Damn it. No, that was Rashek. He's the copycat. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess a fictional character because I have nothing else to go oh, off. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, sure. I think, um, I believe Bright Lord Sterling is one oh of the characters God. from the Roshar and Pride and Prejudice. Uh, it's I, not Bright Lord <laughs> Sterling. Uh, I don't know if that's his name, but uh, I know who you're talking about. It's not them. I was going to, before oh, you said God. that, I was going to say, is it a character from the in world story that is written? Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're about to guess. That's yeah. good. Is it mixed tease? All right. Clue two. This character can speak more than one language. Sigzel. Dalinar. It's not Sigzel, it's not Dalinar. Can Dalinar? Yeah, this is actually a good question. Does he actually speak the language or does he use I, hacks? I, um, I think it's good enough. Moonlight he, prefers he the He does hacks. speak, he learns the language. Um, yeah. It just doesn't stick. Um, <clears throat> is that really learning then? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, the magic I don't, can speak all the languages. Can no, Dalinar? I don't. It's true. <laughs> I don't actually think he learns the like he in his it's, head he's speaking Alethi is just coming out as whatever. Yeah, it's it's coming out. But if you record it, it would sound like what language the language okay. that he is like. But it doesn't overwrite his original language like the connection medallions do. Like he can choose to speak in either language. Sure, sure. That, anyway. This is a whole nother podcast. <laughs> we did an episode, did an episode on, on, like, on connection this. and translation. I'll put it in the upper upper right in the YouTubes. There you go. Nice. I'm trying to think of a character who's a linguist. Mm. John Akron. Well, there's a character who's a, a linguist, and her name is uh, Codenames Are Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but she's not male. Um, oh, damn it. I, see, I, I can only hold one clue in my mind at a time. <laughs> it makes this game impossible. <laughs> I'm going to guess Sazed? Nope. <laughs> It's not it's not say said clue three. This character has been called a liar. A male liar <laughs> mm-hmm. who can, can speak, speak multiple languages. Language. Yeah. What about Mraze? It's not Mraze. I like it, though. Hoid. It's not Hoid. Oh, is it him? It could be him. Can't be her, though. That's true. That's true. Or we've rolled that out. Unless that's Bob, then, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be a pretty troll troll one though. This that would be funny. If you picked if well, see, you know who would do it would be Ben. Is Ben be will ben. always pick things, at least one that's got a tie. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do a Who's That Cosmere character episode one of these years. I don't know. We're busy. I don't yeah, I think we've got more interesting things. Not, not that they're not fun, but I feel like we've like we've got other things we want to do before we, we get to. We absolutely those. do. There's so much yeah. on our list, that's for sure. 
Th that's really just going to be the episode where I'm like, crap, we need an episode next week and we uh, let's get some random people <laughs> to do some mm -hmm. character. That's what we'll do. We're never going to have that again. That's There's not too many true. things to talk about. Uh, that's not true. I cannot think of a single person who's being like directly called liar. OK. All right. I feel like there's lots of liars by application. That's what I was going off. Yeah. And like, you know, like I'm sure like has. Oh, here's a good one. Amram. He's definitely been called a liar yeah. and he can read. Do you, do you want to? Yeah. Well, the read was different. <laughs> but they can't speak more than one language. Oh my gosh. You're right. You're right. Uh... Okay, but it's a word thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're very loopy guys on this i stage. want to guess lesian the pursuer okay it's not lesian all right clue four the, his his father is dead oh. okay male how about seth can speak more than one language it's not seth yeah Damn it. and called a liar and his father is dead that was a pretty good guess. Look at that. I that fit everything. Guess. That, that's yeah. true. This is a good guess. I'm redeeming myself. Yeah. Also, the more than one language thing is like, it should be very specific because most Cosmere stories don't take place in worlds where like we get multiple languages. Yeah. Or at least you know where they, it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. What is that guy's name? Describe him. We got you. Yeah. We won't steal it for sure. <laughs> the King's Bastard. Oh, Redden. Oh, Redden. Redden. That's not Redden. Redden. That's not okay. Redden. I thought it was Volom's bastard. Yeah. From, uh, but oh, Volom was, was the king. Probably. He was king at the time. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's he was, okay, that, that's fair. I forgot that he becomes king. He does. And then he does speak there very briefly. <laughs> I will guess Raiden. It's not Raiden. Clue five, although Raiden does. It's just pretty funny, actually. Uh, clue five, his best friend is a merchant. <laughs> that's not random though that should help that should be a big one and there, uh, there will be a bonus clue if you guys don't get it oh we're gonna need a bonus clue eric <laughs> is it <sighs> duke or whatever e e <gasps> oh. like royal's friend who betrayed him a -hain. A -hain, whatever i don't know which vowels yeah. go into that uh no it's not a han okay gonna, yeah it's not it's not a han what about Luke Lucal? It's not Lucal. <laughs> is it like it's it's like the third person there? I, I don't know. Potentially, Maybe. I bet. Best okay. friend's a merchant. So there's a bunch of friendly merchants, and they're all like making bets with each other. Like there's like four of them at least. Yeah, I mean, it's like, like the entire uh, like, nobility. Uh -huh. There's of... Royal. There's it's Yondel. Like, I it's like the whole cast these. of those characters. Yeah. <laughs> Others dead. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. Oh, I got another guess. I know what it is. Damn it. Okay. Do you want to message it to me, David? Yeah, I'm going to do it right now. Yeah, okay. I, I, I am pretty sure I actually lost. Maybe not pretty sure, but okay. if I'm right, I'm right. Okay. That's what I'll okay. say. Okay. There's not a lot of merchants who are also best friends. Oh, no, David, you're wrong. Damn it. It's Spitz, though, Eric, I think. <laughs> well, you know what? It's it's not them. You, you take it up with Evelyn here. I won't, Evelyn. We appreciate your clue. Yeah, we do. We do. We do. I'm I find this it. all very amusing, and you'll see why soon. It's probably because we're heading like down the wrong rabbit hole, and you're Maybe. just like, not the right place. Maybe. Ian's second-guessing himself. What is it, Ian? I'm going to guess Kenton. It is Kenton. Oh. There we go. Damn nice. Because because you guys, I was laughing because you guys were like white sand, white sand, white sand. I'm like, the next one's a white sand one. <laughs> and <laughs> Eric, the best friend, is a merchant. I did not remember Eric being a merchant. I remember him being a guy who likes to is fight. He? He I, I don't actually actually remember. He like walks away. I, he, he was probably, at one point. Um, he's, Kenton is friendly with the Lord Admiral. Yeah. Who does does oh, do merchanting things? That's fair. And was I am, a merchant. He's not his best friend. Uh, and also, uh, that's a good point. Can, that's not Kenton can friend. speak more true. than one language because he can speak the dark can side. Speak dark side. That is that yeah, is true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you can well uh, because different color bubbles. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and Chris called Kenton a liar when she learned he was a sand master because he yep. didn't mention his sand. Oh, I completely forgot about that clue. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's probably remember? for the best then. Yeah. All right. This last one is from our Who's That Cosmic Character Priority Q, which is from our Heralds on Patreon. Uh, and this one is from Starcast. 
And clue one. Welcome to StarCast. That's a troll podcast. Yeah. Clue one. This character is a spren. Maya. It's not Maya. The sibling. It's not the sibling. Sia not. It's not Sia not. Clue two. This character was first introduced in an interlude. Wendell. It's not Wendell. It's a good one, though. Oh, that's doubly good because the Yim interlude also. Oh, I actually no, no, read I guess, No, I guess that wasn't him then. No. Well, okay, well. Yeah, yes. yeah, that would have uh, to be uh, Dreaming Though Awake. That's the name of that friend. Mm. No, that's not the, that's, is that the same No, it's not. No, it's friend. not the same. No, no, no. No, Wendell says that he was, like, investigating yeah. or thinking about Yim, but, like, that's what it is. The, the ring we're investigating. The ring. Sure. The ring. Um, I want to know more but, about uh, the ring. Princess Ash, the, the protector. Ring. It is Kusakesh, the protector. Whoa. Nice. Uh, clue, uh, I actually switched the order around, but uh, <laughs> clue two would have been really helpful. That one was, this character is not capable of forming a Nihal bond. Though I don't know if we strictly know if that's true or not. I don't know. I feel like that might have that might be actually wild. been asked. Maybe. Like, I feel like people are looking for bonds for his mm. friend. There's always Kusakesh questions. Uh, and then... Clue four, 746 is an important number for them. And clue five, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. The, uh, this yeah. character is a tourist attraction. <laughs> cool. <laughs> you guessed it. You guessed it correctly too quickly. I was gonna guess Kalak next. I oh, no, that's a prelude, like, not an interlude. Okay. Yeah, rip, rip. Yeah. It's one of those ludes. It's a lude. It's, it's a lude. Not a, it's not an etude. all right well we're finally done uh we hope you enjoyed this very long episode on uh trail uh there's lots more to come and so you can find us on 17char.com for all your news discussion theories and fun that you could ever want you can join our discord there's a lot of stuff happening uh you can find us on facebook twitter soundcloud and youtube you can join our patreon for as little as a dollar uh and uh you can uh, subscribe and stuff and uh uh, how, put it in the comments below if you put uh, coppercloud.com slash 17s into the, the address bar and see if uh, that was an actual site. But don't go. So, oh, and it. like the Dune thing. Explain Dune in the comments. It just explain Dune. All right. Just, oh, all right. Okay. Were you, were you thinking the Bene Gesserit or whatever? Oh, the Bene Gesserit. Something. Need religions. Yeah, there's something about seeding religions. Yeah, that's a, that's a totally a thing. They talked about that intentionally blank, too. I haven't read Dune either. Uh, <laughs> I haven't my read show. Dune either. <laughs> yeah. We're very cultured. All right, we'll see you all next time for something, presumably. Bye! Bye. Peace. Bye. Ka!